and up. So many great runs breaching in this Tuesday. Blue light, $25. Yay, SGDQ. Good luck, runners. Alien isolation hype. Speaking of alien isolation hype, we're going to take it over to Dreyx with alien isolation. Take it away, my friend. Oh, hey, you guys can hear me? Hello, hello. My name is Dreyx. It is so great to be here today. I'm joined by my friends Knowles and Nico Hart. Oh, how are you guys doing? <laughs> I'm doing well, man. Right, so oh, hi, I'm Nico Hart. Awesome. I'm a speedrunner of Alien Isolation Well, most commonly known for the crouch clipping speedruns and also speedrunning on a steering wheel. Knowles? Hey everyone, I'm Knowles. I'm an Alien Isolation speedrunner. Uh, I run AM, no CC, just like Dre. I also do CC only in 100%. We'll explain what CC means after a short bit here. Heck yeah. So uh, I think a quick category description is necessary because as you might have seen on the like preview, there's there's a lot of different aspects to this category. So we're running Alien Isolation, which is a survival horror game. A lot of you guys probably know it. Um, but if you don't, the gist of it is we're trapped in a space station with lots of threats and we don't want to die. Uh, there's a story to go along with it too, but we'll, we'll get to that when, when it's more relevant. Um, I am running no CC glitch tech. Now, it doesn't mean no closed captioning. It means no crouch clipping. Uh, which is a glitch where you bind your scroll wheel to crouch and you hug doors really closely and disappear through them. It completely breaks the game. So instead, I'm doing all the glitches except for that one. And uh, you can... Oh, jeez, man. I'm losing my train of thought. Uh, and so, yeah, we'll, we'll do all kinds of fun stuff. It'll force us to play through the entire game with a couple exceptions. That should be a, should be a good time. Um, let's see. We're also doing Nightmare Difficulty, which is Alien Isolation's hardest difficulty. In fact, the game wasn't even released with Nightmare Difficulty, so um, it's pretty nice. But uh, other than, so including the obvious, right, the AI is a lot more sensitive and weapons do a lot more damage. Uh, but as well, we get the least loot. Um, we use... Uh, I'm forgetting something, dude. The, the, as soon as the spotlight's on, I just forget what my category so the, is. The, the <laughs> Xenomorphs are at their highest difficulty. Basically, the Xenomorphs can actually learn a bit more about where your positioning is and the sound. It can get very, very feisty. Uh, the, the androids are more fierce. The humans are more fierce. Damage is more, is more intense. It's a nightmare. Get it? I just, I just remembered, we don't get any HUD, so you have no idea how much health you have, unless you can't heal, so you have full health, or you're dead and you have no health. Um, so uh, the run, we actually have to memorize how much health we have for the most part, and it's, uh, it's pretty hectic. Um, you get no map, but you know we don't really need that. And uh, there's one other thing too, but we'll get to that when, when it makes a little more sense. So I won't keep you guys waiting anymore. I know this is hype. I know it's uh, pretty late in the day too. So. Um, yeah, let's, uh, let's get to this. So we're going to start game Nightmare. It gives us a couple prompts to warn us that, you know, Nightmare is scary. So we're going to skip a cause of couple cutscenes here, and time starts as soon as the loading wheel disappears. Um, I will attempt to count it down, but let's see here. Cutscene one and cutscene two. All right, I'm going to guess about three, two, one, go. Oh, dude, right on. There we go. <laughs> Good luck, my dude. Good luck. Oh, please. man. So, yeah, we're starting as Amanda Ripley. We're on the Torrens, and we are on a mission to find our uh, our mother who went missing. As you may, If you know the original Alien movie, this game pulls a lot from it. Uh, we're trying to figure out what happened to her. So we're going to just a vast full station, which we'll soon see is falling apart. All right, we've got to sign in here. Oh, man, I'm going to do a quick trick to grab a bit of loot. You might not have even seen it pass by the screen. That's just how fast we are, because, you know, we like gaming in this, uh, this town. Oh man, so the first thing we gotta do, other than the like, second thing, uh, is get dressed. Unfortunately, this is a required quest. It's, it's a huge bummer it's required too, because I think you'd be a lot more aerodynamic if you ran naked. Just saying, you know, we're about every possible second you can save, like, you know. Oh man, so. <laughs> Um, I, have to say, I love this game though, and again, it is such an honor to be here at GDQ today. I can't thank you guys enough for having me. All right, so we're, we gotta talk to our crew now. We're gonna walk into Samuels and walk away. Uh, oh, well, pressure's getting to me. Oh, there we go. Okay, that's that's never happened before. <laughs> count one. Count one. Count one. I, I genuinely, I have never walked into the room and then only... That was weird. It's all right, you know? That's that's what happens. <laughs> oh, man. Now we're going to talk to Taylor as well, doing the same thing. And so what this does is uh, the, our, our friends are actually talking while we're gone. So we're going to start the conversation between... 
uh, each other, and they'll keep talking, and then we'll get back and finish up the dialogue. Um, and yeah, we gotta wait for a bit of an audio cue, but yeah, oh man. So here we are in Samuels. Samuels is our Android friend, by the way. I gotta wait right here. Oh, and just for some information, we are running the game in Italian to save some time. Yep, yep, so you may you may hear they don't, they're not speaking English, and uh, as I mentioned, the game kind of has quests or objectives you have to complete, and so some of those are dependent on when the dialogue finishes, and so as you can imagine, the faster that the dialogue completes, the faster we get to the next quest, which saves about 30 seconds over the course of the entire run. You know, oh, a three hour run, every, third, every 30 seconds matters. Now, that's a bummer and not a great sign. That box was empty. Um, Nightmare has the worst loot, but it seems like some runs you get pretty decent loot or runs you get no loot at all. Um, so now we're gonna wait for Samuels here. We're gonna, we're gonna walk back to Samuels here, I should say. Uh, we have to hold the door open because again, he, he doesn't know we're speed running, so we gotta, we gotta help him out a little bit. Doors are tough oh, after all. I see, I see a couple messages in the chat too. Yeah, I've learned more Italian from this game than I'd like to admit. Um, Specifically, Italian non-PG words. It's, uh, <laughs> cracks me up every time. Oh, man. All right, so now we're going to wait in the brief room, and I'm going to drop it over to Nico to explain the cutscene we're about to skip. Right, so what's going to happen here is that after the briefing, we're going to start making our way over to Sevastopol, because the reason that we're going over there is that um, there is a, a, a flight recorder that could ascertain to our mother's location. So we're trying to go over to there, trying to figure out what's going on, but as soon as we start making our way over, asteroids and meteoroids cut the EVA line that is tethered between us. We all go spiraling into space. We luckily land within one of the airlocks of Sebastopol, and we can continue on our merry little way. Heck yeah, dude. <laughs> Fantastic description there. Yeah, so we just finished mission one. Um, the game is divided into 19 missions, and uh, not really these make perfect split timings, by the way, but each mission's kind of notorious for its own thing. So this, is, this here, mission two, is kind of a tutorial mission, so it's a little bit slow, um, but we still have a chance to introduce a lot of cool different features in the run. Oh man, so I gotta take the spacesuit off, you know? Slows us down a little bit as well. I can't run in a spacesuit, which is unfortunate, as you'll see in later missions as well. I'm, I can move while the screen is dark. There we go. I almost had that door right on. Um, so yeah, we're on Sebastopol now, and this station is absolutely in a disarray. It's completely falling apart, as you can see from that gas blast right there. It's just things in disarray. Um, so what we have is, as you guys probably can guess, there's an alien or a xenomorph on the station, but no notori no more notoriously to known to us speedrunners as Steve. Um, Steve is kind of our friend, but but not really. Uh, but because of that, we have androids going crazy thanks to their AI leader, um, as well as some humans that have gone crazy and are in hostile looting groups, and, uh, and we're gonna fall right here. Reason this fall is important is because it does 280 of our 1,000 damage, leaving us at 72. Again, I gotta remember these numbers, so I have 720 health left. Not 72, what? 72, that'd be, that'd be a little bit more stressful. So that um, damage is actually scripted full damage, by the way. It is, yeah, you always take 28, or 280. There's a flare right there, that always spawns there, thankfully. That helps us out quite a bit. Yeah, luckily for- See, that's the name, yeah. Luckily for us, uh, flares spawn in pretty good spots on mission two, because we're gonna use them later mission in Mission two hands us flares, yeah. Oh, man. And so we get sometimes loot up here, come on, don't be scrap. Oh, that's scrap. All right, I'm gonna take it anyway. Energy drink for the soul. I gotta stop looking at chat. I'm sorry, I'm cheating. <laughs> oh, man. Um, but anyway, so, yeah, because of these, you know, more people have gone insane, so we have all kinds of threats. Now, if you've ever played this game before, you may notice I'm activating this lever much faster. It's because I have, I'm able to double bind my use key to my scroll wheel, and the game drops far fewer mouse inputs. Oh. Getting ahead of myself here. So usually you get a med kit here, but we're, uh, we're gonna skip it. Bloopins respawn if you miss them. Come on. Oh, we got bad RNG. That's all right. If you're lucky, you don't take a shock there. If you do get shocked, it does 21 damage, 210 damage. So we're down to 51, 510. I'm sorry, we usually say percent. So I'm uh, misstating my numbers here. All right, and uh, yeah, now off to our left. I'm the tour guide now. We have the, the Torrens flying way, way too close to Sebastopol. Oh man, uh, Verlaine is lucky there's no, uh, there's no flight police or something, because that, that's very dangerous, I imagine. Oh, look, look at that, dude. That's just, just right there. 
I guess it's for dramatic effect, I don't know. She wants to, she wants to flex on us, you know? This game is full of, like, the whole, the most important thing in this run is, is about the flexes. Anyway, so we got another generator over here and a flare on the pool table. We're gonna grab it on the way back around. I love, I love chat. Like, community is genuinely what makes this the best. <laughs> oh man, now we're gonna hop down here. So that flare is useful because the strategy we're gonna use a bit later on, we need two flares for in mission two, and uh, it gives us two all the time, which is nice. Now, we need flares for a couple other strategies later on too, so we need a, <laughs> we need a wish for the best of luck that we get, we get those flares. All right, I'm gonna hop out of this vent here. Uh, we're coming up to beating our friend Axel for the first time. Now he's just gonna run across. Uh, I like to say that how quickly Axel runs is dependent on how badly he needs to use the bathroom, which is completely dependent on RNG. The reason that's important is that we can't run. Um, we'll be stuck walking until he runs across. So Axel, if he doesn't need to use the bathroom, dude, he can cost you five to 10 seconds sometimes. It's, uh, it's a little tragic. So let's hope here. He's gonna appear right around this uh, box. Nice, okay, he really had to go today, dude. So we're actually coming up on something really cool here. This is a reference to the Alien movies. So if you know Jonesy the cat, you can actually hear it when uh, Dre gets to the generator. Unfortunately, we're not gonna spend much time there, but you can hear the cat there if you wanna hear little Jonesy. Yeah, he should've just went off a bit ago. Sometimes he's quiet. Oh man. All right, so we're gonna do another cool trick coming up. I'm gonna intentionally soft lock the game. And you're like, probably like, this guy's nuts, dude. This run is not. <laughs> We're gonna intentionally stop the game. We need a tool called the maintenance jack, which we use for a couple different things on the run. Um, and uh, it is behind a grate, but we're supposed to have a fancy animation to pick up. Now, if we look at it at just right, we're gonna be able to pick it up and uh, skip the animation, but it messes up our camera. Come on, there we are. Not quite a one cycle, but not too bad either, either way. Doing this saves about 45 seconds, but if you notice, I'm moving my head camera left and right. Can't move it at all, I'm stuck looking this way. Uh, so, you know, we might want to fix this. <laughs> Fortunately, oh, there's our friend, the locker. Um, this is the only locker we use in the run, though. Uh, we don't touch them otherwise. They're actually particularly dead, deadly a nightmare. As soon as the Xenomorph learns, because... Uh, oh, I'm getting ahead of myself now. <laughs> Alright, so we just met our friend Axel in that cutscene, not too crazy. Uh, I'm going to drop it back over to Nico. We have a, a good opportunity now while we wait to explain one of the biggest glitches we'll be using in the run. Uh, so, Nico... Uh, yes. Absolutely, turn, so this technique that we'll be using is a major glitch which is allowed in uh, the NoCC run. This is called Psycho Running. Well, what Psycho Running is basically is silent walk, uh, silent running, sorry. So to perform this, what you need to do is you need to hold forward and right, and then you need to hold sh uh, sprint and tap crouch every half a second. It can be either half a second or a little bit more frequently. So. What happens is that it's going to cause a silent step as you're running, and so the like the more so, the the more continuously that you do this silent step, just basically you're just completely silent as you run past the xenomorphs, the androids, the humans. You can just run by them, no problem, no worries. They won't even know where you are. It's amazing. And um, the reason that it's called Psycho Running is because uh, Psycho Hypnotic is the one who discovered it, who is a prominent uh, speedrunner within the the, the the community. Heck yeah, dude. Oh, we're gonna do a cool little trick here, uh, discovered by my friend Vanos, that allows you to skip waiting for Axel to hop in the elevator. And if we get it just right, boom, we get instant butt. It's always a good time. Um, so Axel's gonna explain to us real quickly why people are going crazy, what it did a bit ago. There's Umonstro on the station. As you can tell, that's my Italian right there. Um, <laughs> and uh, that's why people are crazy. Um, the psych running, like Nico was mentioning, if you're curious on the technical aspect of how it works, um, is the game has a cool feature where it tries, you can't see because I have my field of view so high, but it tries to synchronize your feet hitting the ground with the actual sound you make. Um, and by moving forward and strafing to the right while sprinting, um, you actually are doing an animation where you have about half a second without taking a footstep. Um, now, if you pair that with the fact the game has a toggle sprint, so if you press crouch while you're running, it just resets your animation, you can continuously reset your animation. Oh, we got Runner Jake and show it off. So this is what it looks like. It's, it's a little bouncy, it's a little weird, but you know. We can continuously reset, reset our animation and not make any noise. Uh, I'm gonna quickly buy my items too. You can hover in the radial menu and press the respective number you want, and then you can uh, access them just by pressing a number, which is also really useful. You know, you know speeds, uh, speeds the key. Oh my gosh, I see friends in the chat toggle and, and space, guys. It's so great to see you. Oh man. <laughs> 
Sorry, calling out, calling out the OGs that have, uh, <laughs> that have been watching me, supporting me so, so much as I've been trying to get this run into GDQ. I just, I just have to thank them. Um, uh, yeah, Kyle, we'll, we'll, we'll wait for Axel. We got a hot minute for a donation or two, if there's any. Oh, there's plenty coming in for you, man. Awesome. We got 25 from Laser Crystal. First time donator here hey. had to put in a donation during my man Dreyx's alien attempt. Here's to a smooth Heck run, yeah. and donation goes to runner's choice. Oh man, laser. Another, another OG. <laughs> and I've got one from Battle Mule for $25. Thanks to everyone in the background keeping everything up and running smoothly. It can't be an easy job this year. Thank you very much, Battle Mule. They are doing an awesome job. Heck yeah. I think we can squeeze in one more as we go into Axel's den. Yeah, you got it. Uh, Cecil donates $15. Night crew here, waking up at midnight to watch some Alien Isolation and staying for all the other games coming up. Hype for horror games. Heck yeah, dude, all the hype. So we're gonna run Adam Axel. There's a Bonnie game to here, that's pretty nice. Grab flashlight batteries. We don't have a flashlight yet, but a fun fact is if you reload it, you can, you have the flashlight anyway. You know, it's, it's pretty nice. Uh, now let's see here. We have to wait for Axel server it. So I'm gonna try to get this trash game into the vent. It doesn't do anything important except be really satisfying. Oh no, dude, my angle's all off. I'm not sure if I got it. <laughs> oh man. It looks like we didn't get the good trash game. That's all right, that's all right. Oh, actually, you know what? I'm gonna do a quick reroute. Uh, I'm gonna do a safety save here. There's like a one in 100 chance Axel dies with what we're about to do coming up. But if he does die, we have to do all of mission two over again. So I'm just gonna play it safe. Um, there's me getting a flare out without opening the radio. And, uh, yeah, so the devs make us stare at his butt for a while. That's why Mission 2 is pretty slow. I, I guess Sega decided they, they did a really good job modeling it, and uh, they wanted to see it a lot. Now, I'm going to light this flare, which may be a little weird. Right, if flares are so valuable, why are we using it right now? It's, it's, it's worth it, I promise. Um, so though Axel has, you know, they did a great job modeling him. Uh, he, it's, it's still slow to appreciate. So we're going to get a flare ready, and we're going to get the lineup just right. I'm about to do a trick called a plant clip, which I believe is discovered by our runner Cliffs. Um, and it involves setting the item on the ground and then uh, quickly adding, activating a prompt you couldn't otherwise reach. All right, I gotta get the timing just right when he puts his head the second time. There we go. And scroll, very nice. I was, I almost never missed it, but man, I was so worried. The first time I show off Alien, I was gonna, I was gonna box the, uh, the plant clip. All right, so we got ahead of Axel. We broke the we broke the uh, the quest line a little bit. So this is where we need the second flare as well. We got some humans coming up. We've got to distract them. Uh, so as soon as I crouch down, there we go. This is supposed to be a cutscene. We can skip it. We're gonna throw a flare through the vent and uh, show off Psycho running to its finest. Now hopefully their timing timing is RNG, of course. No, nope, little slow. So uh, as you can see, like the humans can't even hear Dre. Um, we're pretty lucky that this uh, two flare Did setup was found because usually this is extremely difficult and we used to have to reset almost every time at this part. But luckily, um, we found some strats and now it works Heck out yeah. perfectly. Mm -hmm. All right, so we broke the quest line as well. So we have to stare at this door until Axel decides to teleport. It usually takes 10 seconds, but every now and again, and we think it's harbor dependent, but we haven't really found out what, it, it'll, it'll teleport instantly, which is nice. But um, and there he is behind us, uh, I think. I did, dude! We got a third flare! Yo, okay. So, uh, getting a third flare on Nightmare and Novi- Sorry, a Nightmare on Mission 2 is absolutely pog. It's a it's a <laughs> you know I'm cool when I say- I say emotes in my speech, right? Or maybe- maybe not cool. <laughs> oh, man. All right, this scene sounds a little weird if you're if you don't know what's happening. Uh, so take out the grain of salt. But yeah, usually don't get a flare. Uh, if this weren't a marathon, it would allow me to go for a really really risky strat in the next mission. But uh, we're gonna save it because again, the more flares we have, the better. Uh, honestly, the more the more saves the run, the more flares we have. So, oh man. Man, I think the last time I got a third flare in mission mission two was like a month ago. That's that's crazy. All right, Axel, ah, he was fast, there we go. Sometimes he likes to linger, even though there's people with guns following him. Uh, we got another cutscene here as well. Uh, the short summary of it is our ax front Axel's no longer, he disappeared in that hole right there. 
Oh man, and uh, yeah, we're gonna press this button here. As soon as we do, Steve or the alien becomes active, which gives me a perfect chance to describe act alien activity states. Um, so there's kind of four major states that we consider in the run. There is inactive, meaning whatever you do, how much mo however much noise you make, he's he's not a threat. He he won't he won't be anywhere near you. There's active like he is right now, where he's not really looking for you, but if you make too much noise and you know you you make him desperate for a hug or something, he will drop down. He will he will try to find you for a little bit. Um, then there's patrolling, which we won't see for a little while, but he will actively be listening for you as well as coming down and actively trying to find you. Um, now, thanks to psych running, patrolling is broken a little bit, but we'll get to that later. Uh, finally, there are scripted events, which there's quite a few of them in, in the run, and we can take uh, really good advantage of those while during the speed run as well. Uh, for example, he is scripted to drop if you take about 10 seconds or more to actually get into this tram. Now, fortunately, because, you know, we're, we're speed running, we're gaming here, we'll get into this tram no problem, but, oh man. All right, and uh, just like that, that concludes mission two. We should have time for one donation, I believe. You got it. Speaking I got it. of uh, saying emotes out loud, Hoyd donates $30 saying, so glad SGDQ is back. Good luck on the alien isolation run, and I'll donate another 20 if I can get some pogs in the chat. Get those pogs, get those pogs. Hey, heck yeah, dude, all the pogs, let's get it. <laughs> Oh man, so we're beginning mission three, and uh, we have a uh, we have a, a scene where a lady shoots a revolver randomly in the air. Um, if I'm really lucky, it'll it'll hit me. It's not supposed to. It's, it's random, but you know, because we're in a marathon, there's 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 a, it seems like a higher chance is gonna hit me. Um, <laughs> so we'll see. Fortunately, mission three has a save, so we're not gonna backtrack too far. But uh, yeah, let's see. There she is, right there. Okay, nice. We're good. <laughs> All right, and the goal of Mission 3 is to get right to this door. So easy money, right? Just just walk through. <laughs> Unfortunately, no. The door is the door is locked down with security, so we need to hack it. But of course, the hack tool is broken too. So we need we need quite the detour here. Oh man. Anyway, we're gonna run up the stairs here. This part is actually usually pretty difficult for the casual player. Uh, but thanks to Psycho running and the fact we're moving fast, we can sneak around before the humans get into position, and without making any noise. It's gotta go vroom vroom, dude. Vroom vroom, my dude. <laughs> Heck yeah, man. All right, we're gonna press. Oh, I missed the button. We're gonna press that button there. Um, it's for a bug. If you listen here, there they go. The humans are scripted to open it when I get halfway down the stairs. Um, because the door was supposed to be locked with the scripted to open it, it kind of reverses the door state. Uh, oh, by the way, Steve's over there, but he, he's not a problem. It, it reverses the door state, and then the door just gets stuck open, which is useful later because we would otherwise need to hack that one too. Alright, we grab the revolver ourselves. Now, our revolver doesn't do nearly as much damage as the, the enemies, of course, it's just our luck. But the game helps us compensate with the shotgun later. Alright, gonna grab the smoke bomb recipe there, might not have seen it. Uh, I, I never once used a smoke bomb for the intended purpose in the run, but it is important for one or two clips. Um, and Nico, uh, I'm, I'm getting ahead of myself. Yeah, go ahead, uh, we got some cutscene here. <laughs> I'm just trying to think about where we... Oh, yeah, so what we're currently um, now at is the flight recorder that we have been trying to find this whole time, but unfortunately, it's just not in a good state, as in it's completely corrupted. So we do get a little bit angry. We do get a little bit mad. We do... Um, Bang off this the <laughs> Can we get some ripply rage in the chat? <laughs> I wish that were remote. That needs to be in a mode now. Oh man. A uh, quick trick. I'm gonna grab a little the data cell right there. Usually you have to do three shelves, but thanks to the peak key, which breaks a lot of things in this game, we can reach over and just grab the second one. All right, Nico, go ahead and continue. Wanted to point out the glitch while it happened. Uh, I'm just trying to. I'm a little bit in the delay. Um, what's going on? <laughs> Sorry. No worries, yeah, the delay is probably a bit tricky. Oh, right, so um, so you just did the peak glitch there. So what you're doing there is you're, uh, you're holding shift and forwards and you're peeking uh, just into the boxes. And um, as you're peeking, you actually do get an opportunity to be, to be able to press E, uh, um, the use key on the, uh, that little prompt. So you can actually grab the, the data cell a lot earlier than you should be able Come to. On. Heck yeah, so if you notice I'm doing these hacks pretty fast too, I'll let you guys in on the speedrunner secret as the exclusive, you're uh, catching the alien run here. Um, all the symbols at the bottom of the tuner are always in the same location. All you gotta do is memorize where they are and then you just read left to right on the top and you're good to go. The trickiest part is actually finding where the hack is, if you notice I struggled a little bit with that one. 
Oh man, now we get a cutscene. Again, this is our voice T for anyone, uh, anyone coming. And we get a nice view of Steve, just like, you know, his full glory. We get, especially get the view of his tail, and I'm, I'm disappointed there's no Easter egg where you can, like, reach out and grab the tail. You know, an alternate ending to the game. It'd be a much faster speedrun, but I, uh, you know, I guess a missed opportunity. Just give it a little tug, dude, see what happens. A little tug, yeah, dude. Show, show Steve you love him too. All right, so uh, for the nature of the marathon, uh, I got to do another safety save here. I usually wouldn't for the, uh, I would usually wouldn't for if I'm going for world record or something. Uh, so Dre is going to be psycho running here for a specific reason, even though the alien's technically not active down here. He's doing it to mess with the human RNG, and he's going to go over uh, another glitch that we did earlier. Yep, yep. So um, the humans have a chance at spawning, or the humans and the alien all spawn in kind of the different spots. It's random. And depending on which one the aliens, which one Steve is attacking first, uh, can make this uh, safe exit a really deadly exit. And it happens, it's right at the end of mission three, too. So doing that save just so I have to redo mission three if we get the bad RNG. We'll see. So yeah, this door is stuck open here. Again, usually you'd have to hack it. And come on, come on. No, we got the bad formation. I'm gonna do my risky backup strat, but it's might not work. All right, gotta get down here. And no, I was too early. I was too early. Dang it. He's really under. So backup strat, hide behind the corner. Try to anticipate as soon as he's gonna run for our, for our other guy, but he, uh, he, he never gives you any indication when he's gonna run. Sometimes he sprints, other times he waddles. It's just. Man, dude. <laughs> so there's so many different strategies that can actually be performed here. There's like a smoke bomb strategy. There's uh, just completely avoiding it going all the way around. Um, it, like, depending on the kind of like safety oh, of doing on. this section. Uh, Get the bad formation again. All right, come on. You got this, man. Keep getting the there bad formation. I hope I have enough time. Let's see here. Come on. Give me this good, good. Come on, come on. There he goes, there he goes, there he goes. Nice, we're good, nice. we're in. <laughs> so nice. Mission 3 Dude, has awesome. a unique feature that doesn't, that nowhere else in the game, as soon as you pass the threshold of the elevator, he freezes for just a split second, which is just long enough to hit the elevator button. Ooh, that's, <laughs> got the bad RNG twice in a row, but we compensated the second time. All right, mission four is the mission of androids now. Um, every android except for the super droids has a chance at spawning with a dance animation. Uh, we didn't get it here. Um, I, I, another thing from the Alien movie. Uh, it's pretty cool. It's really rare though, but um, yeah, it's important. It, well, maybe not important, but it's, it's it's a nice little nice little Easter egg if you get it. Oh man. All right, so what we're trying to be, what we're going to be doing now within the game is uh, the main goal is that we're going to try to get to uh, the communications so that we can try to uh, communicate with um, the people that we went across over to Sevastopol with and see how how they are, just catch up with them, you know, little chit chats, and um, we've got a few things to do in between though. Heck yeah! Awesome. So we just picked up the motion tracker. Uh, there's actually only one spot other than right there that I actually use the motion tracker. I guess maybe two if you count listening to it, but I only whip it out once. Uh, we also get a second variation on door hacks, and it's even more RNG dependent. Ah, uh, not quite. It drops your inputs too, so if they're all right at the start, you actually can't get any benefit out of it, which is a little tragic. Also, um, just a little thing behind the motion tracker. It's actually meant to find rats, but. Uh, in the game, we can use it to find a uh, good old yeah, Steve. Yeah, that's a bit of lore. Heck yeah. Oh man, so now we get a cutscene with Hughes here. I love it. Is this guy overclogged? Dude, I took a lot of caffeine. This run happened a bit later than I expected it would. <laughs> anyway, so uh, the androids have an important feature. They need to be tickled every now and again. Uh, so there Hughes goes attempting to tickle, but unfortunately this guy hasn't had a proper tickle, and uh, Hughes is just not, not doing it right. It does not end very well for our friend Hughes, unfortunately, as you'll see. So uh, just a big, just yeah. a big FYI with the androids. If they have red eyes, that means they are a bad. They are yeah, a bad. red, <laughs> red bad. Oh man, red bad, and yeah, they haven't been kept up to date, dude. These androids require a lot of maintenance, you know. Now, fortunately, we have our unsickle tool, and uh, with 450 hours in this game, I'm pretty confident in my my abilities here. You have to be gentle with the tickle tool, you know. Just. Camera set off. It's, it's okay. Um, that happens sometimes. Uh, it, all, all it does, we can't get a box there. But yeah, if you set off the camera, the, the elevator opens before the Android gets here anyway. So it's it's actually not a threat. <laughs> it's 
it's a, it's a, it's a wholesome form of suggestions. I'm going to see if I've got any. I do. Our loot's actually looking pretty good this run. Fingers crossed it stays that way. Uh, these first eight missions, it's, it's imperative we get a, a pretty nice set of loot. Um, now, we have a bunch of grumpy androids up here, too, so we're going to try to be careful. Here, get a psycho run past him. Okay, nice. He's just sticking, standing there. Um, so I'm going to run up ahead. And uh, Nico, want to explain the cutscene we're about to skip up here? Okay, so as I mentioned earlier on that we are going to be communicating with some people. We are going to be talking with Samuels and Taylor. Now, um, Samuels is going to tell us that Taylor is injured and she's not doing quite well and that we're going to need a like a med kit and some sort, some sort of like trauma kit, basically, in order to help her uh, to not be um, in pain. So that's kind of like our next mission is to go and find a trauma kit. Heck yeah. Um, so yeah, Samuels is sending a tram for us to medical. Now, that door was open, and that's actually glitched. Oh, he's here. This doesn't usually happen, so, oh, okay, walking that way. Count Come two. on. Count two. <laughs> and it does It does happen, just not usually. Now, we have another android here we need to pull from the elevator. I'm going to turn on my flashlight and make a lot of noise. What I'm doing is the opposite of psycho running. It's a psycho hop. Ooh, that flick. That felt good, dude. Um, the reason is he gets trapped in the elevator with us. Again, well, I'm at 510 out of 1,000 health. Uh, half health, I should maybe say. And uh, he, he does some extra damage to us if we get trapped in the elevator with him. So, so uh, yeah. Uh, psycho hopping is generating noise. Obviously, with Psycho running, it is um, being silent. So um, if yep, we want to make yep. the androids come towards us, we want to generate more noise. So we Psycho hop to just like bang our feet on the floor rapidly, basically. Heck yeah, so it works the same way as well. The only difference is that we set, we're resetting our animation to an animation where we start with a footstep instead of have half a second until a footstep. <laughs> we're shaking the camera. Honestly, I love uh, the term that somebody put in Steam. It was like ninja running or something like that. Yes. I thought that was oh, a ninja funny stepping. term for I remember that, yeah. yeah. So I think uh, the camera shaking you're like... seeing is probably my... Uh, it's probably my psycho running. Again, I have to press crouch, and so I, you know, the rhythmic, I just, I get in the zone. I press it a little hard. Um, nice. So I did the same trick, trying to pull a droid towards me as well. Uh, oh, Steve is. Steve's a little grumpy today, too. That does happen. I just, you know. <laughs> oh, man. All right, let's see here. So we're still mission four. We're, we, we're going back down exactly where we were. Now that we now that we know where we need to go, we we found Samuels and Taylor. We didn't successfully connect to comms, but we're all right. Now I'm psychoing here because Steve is active here. Again, that means he's listening for us, but he's not looking for us. Uh, but he is still a threat despite no apparent ones. You can hear him thumping around up there too a little bit. Get ready for a mega flex. Chat. Oh heck yeah, dude! So this this runs all about flexing, right? Um, some doors in this game are really just suggestions. Um, you know, it's, it's one, of my, one of my favorite features. This one up ahead happens to be a suggestion. This right, game's get a suggestion. Come oh, on. there we go, dude. <laughs> nice and smooth. The reason, reason uh, we, we're coming back here um, is we have to wait for the tram for one. And two, uh, this, this, the, a copy of Hughes, it's the same model with the same unfortunate fate, uh, has, uh, always has a med kit on him. It's one of the guaranteed spawns and it helps us out quite a bit. That was a very, very smooth. <laughs> That was clean, dude. <laughs> I can't deny that. That was I, nice. I felt good. At, they don't usually go that well. That's that's what a, this has never happened before. But like, you know, the good count kind. free. Doors are just <laughs> a suggestion. Not? I don't know. It's a, it's a good meme. I, it's a quality meme that I appreciate. All right, we're beginning mission five now. I gotta make sure I don't get I don't get behind on myself. Um, so like I mentioned, our friend Samuels is an android. He has the same chance to do that dance as the other androids, and he's right in front of dying Taylor. So on the chance he does that dance, it is said that the run is blessed because you know he's dancing in front of dying Taylor. <laughs> and unfortunately, we did not get it. That's all right. I don't know what the odds of it are. I, th I think I've seen it a grand total of twice. So <laughs> you know how it would be. Can we take a donation? Oh, sure, I got one for you. We got fifty dollars from Tagma the Fox. Hey, Tagma! Says hello there, Dre. Tagma here. May your revolver shots be true and your mini games not green. Good luck with the rest of the run. We're cheering you oh, on in the Andy. Discord. Much love to Dude. you, the GDQ staff, and Doctors Without Borders. My homie Tagma, another another OG. So. Uh, Tagma deserves all the love. <laughs> Dre, this grab the blueprint yeah, from over the wall. Yeah, I was going to mention that for yeah. sure. <laughs> so just like some doors are suggestions, walls are suggestions as well, um, some of them. So we, we reached and grabbed the pipe bomb V3, which we're not supposed to be able to get until mission 12. Um, 
That said, uh, you know, the way we're supposed to do Mission 12 is slow anyway, so we might as well just grab a way for Coolman. Um, by the way, Coolman is the name of the doctor we're about to meet. Well, we'll see more Coolman coming up. Remember that name, Coolman. That's all I can cool say. Coolman. It's, it's, it's a good name. Yeah, it's one of my favorites. It really is. Mm. <laughs> Oh, so we'll get to the green mini games if you guys are curious too. That's uh, that's another fun quirk. So Coolman is basically going to be telling us that, like you know, he's he um, he's not going to be able to get um, the trauma kit in order, and 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 he, he's going to get us to do the work for him basically. So um, in the cutscene, that's going to come up very shortly. We're just going to be checking around, kind of like navigating uh, what items we need to make if we can, and then getting ready to enter where there is a possible. Threat. Right. Possible. Possible. <laughs> Just a little bit. Yeah. Mm. So, the game, the devs did a fantastic job. Uh, this is the first mission where the alien will instead be in the actively patrolling state. And I know our, our host, Kyle, is uh, currently stuck in this mission, too, so I'm very excited to show this, this strategy off. I have died um, so many times. <laughs> Oh man, so we gotta hack this door here. Oh, uh, but anyway, because of that, it makes the strategy for this actually pretty easy. You gotta hack this door. Now, I know the key code is already one. I already know the key code is 1702. You just gotta convince the game you know it by showing the game, it, we're, we're, like, by all finding the, it, you know? All the correct trigger points that you have to activate, basically. Exactly, yeah. yeah there's um, like... And he's gonna start dropping this vent. I'm gonna take up my revolver as a, to, to free up my camera again, because it kind of forces my camera over there. Just like that. And, uh, all right. It's so easy to choke this when the pressure's on. Yeah, there we go. I know you can type with a numpad, by the way. I know it was good coding on Sega's part, but uh, they do force objectives on us. If it didn't do that, we could actually just plant clip into an elevator to mission six. But unfortunately, yeah, Sega yeah. had big brains and they... All right, so um, we need a key card and uh, it's on our friend Morley here. He's not looking so hot, probably needs a day off. But nonetheless, he has our key card, so we're gonna borrow it from him for a little bit. Uh, and yeah, so you notice I ran that whole time? That's because Steve was still in his animation that whole time. We're finally psycho running now because he's finally a bit of a threat, but even still, he's not very sensitive. So we, we teased out in mission two, uh, the AI learns in this game. Now it doesn't technically have a full learning algorithm, but it does have a tree. All right, there's our boy Coolman again. Uh, we gotta wait for him, so I'm gonna grab some loot. Uh, but yeah, it does have a tree, and so uh, as you do various things, the alien activates more nodes on this tree, and it gets smarter as it feels. Um, it is also scripted to get smarter if you don't unlock it yourself as the run goes through. So Steve will get harder despite the fact you don't interact with him a ton. Uh, but we can we can compensate. All right, so we gotta wait for him here. Um, now, Coolman's gonna do a little bit of a flinch, and as soon as he does, that begins his death animation. Uh, and, you know, unfortunately we can't stick around and watch it, but, uh, all right, hope I don't soft lock. Oh, th okay, not quite soft lock. So, I have this weird glitch on my system where my FPS drops considerably. I gotta pause and resume. Yeah, so I can't move. Uh, it's, I haven't figured out why. I'm the only person who's gotten this glitch so far. So, uh, with, uh, with Coolman being dead now, I'm sure you could say that he's not a cool man any eh. any more. Hi. <laughs> Thinking, speaking of things being cold, we're starting mission six. And mission six starts in the cryogenic freezer storage area. I, I guess I don't think they store the freezers, but the cryogenic area. Um, I gotta focus a little bit. Oh heck. <laughs> so, uh, so we're gonna get pretty cool ourselves. Now, seed is active here, uh, oh so we have to be careful. God. <laughs> The, uh, oh, I took a couple footsteps. Oh, this might not be good. So I know that Dre is concentrating, so I'm just going to go over this really quickly. Um, so oh, this is no, actually... He dropped. This is the most I active. Sure uh, this is the most active spot for Steve to be in. Actually, he can hear our footsteps pretty clearly, so we can't actually make more than one or two footsteps here. And if you make a little tippity tap, you're uh, you're going to have bad things happen. Yeah. So I just did that. I, I was just not moving smooth. Um, but yeah, the other caveat of cycle running is you. If you turn too sharply left, you get a different animation. Um, so what happens with that different animation is that you do take footsteps, and so you make noise, and Steve doesn't like the noise. Uh, so we have to make nice, smooth turns. Come on. That door's hold open, too, which is actually pretty rare. It means Steve is right above the door. <laughs> That's another fun fact, too. We can tell where he is without seeing him. 
All right, come on. We're gonna open the rewire here, and uh, we're gonna get some power to the vent. Yeah, so we did all this because we needed to open a vent. So you entered a cool rooms to just open a vent. Yeah, dude, we got we got cold. Uh, just for the vent. Now, I don't know exactly where the states change, uh, but uh, vaguely around the time we drop out of this vent, he will change from active to actively patrolling. Uh, that said, we move fast enough with our psycho running that we're usually okay. Uh, we're okay so, so we can usually afford a couple footsteps as well, so. All right, gonna do a peek. There we go, nice. So again, for uh, mission six, we want to be mostly silent. So again, the psycho running is so prominent for this uh, mission. It is, yeah. All right, we're gonna do one left turn really quickly here. So when you turn Just left steps, during nice. cycle running, right, you actually do here. create a, a step so that you have to be very, very careful with your left hands in uh, cycle running. Oh my gosh, I'm typing all the codes wrong. Yeah, so do five is a five, and we got another RNG event similar to Mission 3, so I gotta jump another marathon approved safety save here. <laughs> I'll wait for the key card to open up. Um, yeah, so there's three humans and they all have revolvers, so that means each one of them can individually one-shot me. And there's a formation that I get, and so I can listen to my motion tracker here, and I hope we get an early boop. Come on. There we go. Nice, that sounds like a good formation, so we should be good to go, actually. If you get a late boop, then usually there's just going to be three humans in your pathway, and uh, nice. an infinite yep, chance they spawn of, right uh, here. Of, uh, <laughs> of reaching the same fate as Coolman. Yeah. Oh man, so Steve is not active in this room at all. He is scripted to, to chill around a couple vents, uh, but again, it's pretty obvious where he is on the vents, but I would suggest against walking under them. Uh, the rule of thumb is drool equals bad. Uh, we, we, got, we got good RNG, which I, I thought for sure we are getting bad RNG for the marathon, man. Oh man. If Steve looks thirsty, just don't go underneath that vent. He yeah, won't. He, it's generally a Steve, good idea. Steve is a thirsty, thirsty xenomorph, man. All right, we gotta hack this. And what we're doing is we're activating the emergency procedure something. I wish I knew exactly what it was, actually, now I think about it. Uh, man, he's empty, too. We're not getting the best loot. Let me check my pipe bomb up here. But anyway, we're gonna start the alarm system so we can actually get the heck out of here. Got one injector, yeah. Loot's looking a little scarce, but fingers crossed we get what we need. Don't forget, uh, the so loot is... So we a bit of RNG here, too. <laughs> the loot is Sorry, so I'm cutting bad you off, though. Nico. Oh, man. Oh, he saw me, too. Okay. Oof. We got each human can spawn a different spot. Come on. This second guy is looking good. Come on. So Dre's coming up on another force damage segment. The game actually has something really smart programmed in here where you get health even if you're low. So we try not to heal before mission seven, or even we don't even really heal in mission seven either. I, but I kind of did because I wasn't thinking about it. No, headphone oh, users warning this part does get loud. Um, I don't know how loud it's turned up for the actual event, but uh, you know. Here's our boy Steve again. Um, and we get another med kit for free too, which is which is top two. <laughs> it's a pretty uh, hot item right there. <laughs> it is, it's a pretty hot item, yes. Yeah, so, you know, we just got cool. Now it's time to get a little bit warm. It's a little toasty in here. You yeah, know? some icy hot for that, dude. All right, we also get a med kit here always, which is also really nice. If you're running low percent, it's painful because it's right there and you can't grab it. <laughs> Hey, Dre, um, you're going too fast. You might need to cool down a little bit. Oh, heck, you're right, Nico. <laughs> I love, dude. I think things are just really starting to heat up. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, so we got a kind of ladder climb here. I, I'm not really confident. I've done this climb so many times, I forget just how dramatic and, like, you know, daunting it's supposed to be. Uh, you know, Ripley likes to show off a little bit, but... <laughs> you know, that's about the extent of it. Sorry, with the delay, it's a little bit hard to tell where you're at, so I'm trying to, like, predict, like, oh, where you're okay, at. Oh, that's okay, yeah. It looks like I'm about 15 seconds delay for myself, so... I'm sorry for the oh, dad man. jokes, chat. <laughs> nah, dude, dad jokes are where it's at. That's what makes this run. Let's make it run wholesome. Dad jokes is best jokes, of course. It's yeah. like, it's like, <laughs> oh, God, we, got, we got a moment for, uh... feeling hot, oh. hot, hot. Uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> no, it's okay. We're getting all over each other. We're too excited about this, I think. Kyle, we got a moment for uh, a couple more donations here. Uh, sure. We're about I've to go into from, uh, that wonderful voice on the couch. Nico Hart 77 says, hey. "Non scappy, my boy, for fifty dollars." <laughs> non scappy. My Italian can tell you guys that one too. That stands for no running. 
I had to look that up to make sure it wasn't profanity. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man, so we're about to begin Mission 7. I mentioned a lot of the missions are known and notorious for their own things in the run. Mission 7 is notorious for being one of the biggest, biggest run killers. It also has about a billion different strategies, and so Knowles is going to tell you about the strategy I'm about to attempt to do. Yeah, so uh, Twitchy actually invented this strategy. It's uh, super useful. He kind of figures out all the M7 strategies for us, actually. So what we're doing is we're trying to get a compression cylinder to fix the elevator. So Dre is going to be abusing the flashlight, actually, here, because we want to pull the humans towards us to open a certain door for us. So you're going to see Dre do a save load which is gonna give him, uh, or it's gonna make the humans come faster and they're actually going to open the door for us. Um, normally you'd have to hack uh, something upstairs and then come down to get the oh. android to do it for you, but we can actually just use the humans. So come on, come on, come yeah, on, come it saves on. quite a bit of time. Nice, okay. So as those are explaining, I got the bad formation. Now fortunately we still got lucky, we still survived, but you don't want, uh, so we have a friend that was right to our left. You don't want him there. If he is there half the time, you get shot on sight. Um, and that actually is kind of dependent on hardware as well. The faster your system, the more quickly the AI reacts and you know, to bring the, the smoothest stream, I'm running on a pretty quick, a pretty quick system right now. All right, so we're gonna save load here, which is good for a safety save as well. Um, but yeah, it makes them move faster. It also manipulates the formation a bit as well. Now we're gonna grab an update to our tuner. So now we get to do hacks with four symbols. You know, it's it's pretty cool, you know. Uh, we're moving up a little. Of course, he's empty too. Um, and I gotta focus here just a little bit. So we gotta wait for just the right timing on this guy. We grab this tool, this weapon, the last mission, which is fantastic for humans. So right, Steve Hiss, there he is, come on. You're playing Turn shockingly around, well, Dre. Turn around, big boy. <laughs> no. He's not supposed to do I'm this. Sorry. I mean the run is currently quite electrifying. Come on. Come on. Yeah, so this floor is, is shocking. Uh it'll it'll hurt you. Steve, you're supposed to turn around. Uh I forgot to do the backup strat. <laughs> <laughs> so we're gonna press the button here. Uh we're gonna do another cool feature as well. Hopefully it works. Come on, Steve. Okay, he's just going in the vent now. He was standing there the whole time. Uh, the humans see flares. Oh yeah, he likes to, to get stuck in the door. He likes to hang around a little bit. Humans like to get stuck in the door. I'm oh, sorry, he would like to watch flares, and so they'll actually look at the flare. Come on. Nice, there we go, dude. Uh, so they'll be looking at the flare, allowing me to psycho run behind them as they're running to check out the flare. Um, it's a really nice feature and works about I'd say 80% of the time. 80% oh, of the so time. So that was actually a solid mission seven. I'm, I'm surprised I didn't have to reload anything yeah. in mission seven. <laughs> yeah, I, I almost always for a marathon. Oh man, so yeah, speaking of flexing, we've got another cool glitch I'm hopefully gonna hit. If I get it, it it's super, super crucial to run uh, because if you miss it, you lose on 0.7 seconds, which is everything in a three hour run. It's called ladder flex. And I'm really hoping I get this flex. Come on, I, maybe I should say I'm gonna get this flex. All right. So if Dre gets this, he'll save seven tenths of a second. <laughs> and if we he doesn't, it, he you, loses time. So. <laughs> oh man, you get it by grabbing the top of the prompter ladder instead of the bottom prompter ladder. Now I hesitated a bit. I missed the prompt slightly, so I probably saved maybe 0.3 seconds. But nonetheless, that concludes mission. I forgot to mention those humans up there. They're 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 scripted. They're stuck in animation. They literally don't even recognize you ever. So don't even don't even sweat them. You can run up to them and like hug them, and they they don't care. They can meet a fiery fate. Oh no. Well, one of them does. Steve pulls them off. It's a little it's a little brutal. All right, here we go. Here's a four symbol act, dude. We're we're moving up. So we're going to be enduring a cutscene very shortly, which is basically um, a few more humans on board Sevastopol and a, and a colonial marshal. Uh, they're going to be confronting Taylor and Samuels, and they're going to be discussing about like trying to help Taylor more. So they're going to say um, that we need to basically re-enable the transit system to better treat Taylor. Yup, yup. Uh, so we got a cool prompt clip coming up here. Uh, we can actually press the elevator, call elevator before. I mean, I'm so used to seeing those prompts in Italian, that scared me for a second. I'm like, that's not the right prompt. <laughs> I literally, like, five minutes before the run, I was like, wait, I gotta swap the subtitles to English? 
Yeah, so with that uh, as well, so um, we can, I, I with, with, with Italian. Being Italian being 30 seconds faster, we are allowed to have the subtitles and all text in English. All right, so this is the spot we're gonna use that smoke bomb, like I mentioned, is for a really fun feature. Uh, so we're gonna run into a room and press a few buttons like an absolute professional that knows exactly what they're doing. Um, during the process, a human's gonna walk in and then an android's gonna walk in, both of which should be threats unless we can get them focused on each other, and that's exactly what I hope to do. All right, humans walking in now. We're gonna be quiet. We gotta press these buttons over here. And I gotta make sure I get this turn nice and quiet here. All right, I'm gonna shoot this terminal. He shoots me every time, but we don't take damage for whatever reason. All right, now I just gotta be quiet again. Sneak past the droid. Very nice, all right. Here we go, same plant clip we did earlier, except timing's not nearly as important. This is the easiest of the plant clips. Each one's a little bit different, but this one has the biggest margin of error. And uh, yeah, doing so saves over a minute, so it's definitely, definitely pretty useful if you can do it. So in this plant clip as well, you actually do skip out on getting uh, one of the torches, which is used to open up these doors in the first place. Exactly, yeah. Now, we don't need it because we're able to get the, the next upgrade in Mission 10. Um, so I got my revolver out too, which is also a uh, useful tool. <laughs> um, so there's supposed to be humans down here. Or there, there will be. They're going to walk down these stairs unless we shoot them just like that. Um, now, I'm incredibly curious, like, if there's anything I want to ask Sega, it's, it's if that feature is intended or not. I imagine intended because it makes sense, but it makes the section so easy, too. They all have revolvers, so they're all insanely deadly. By simply by shooting the stairs, we don't have to worry about them. Uh, they, they will always stay up top the I stairs. I mean, like, now, if you hear a loud shooting sound on a space station that definitely wasn't new on anybody around you, I, w I would also run away, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I would not want to go down those stairs myself. Dude, what are you talking about? You're supposed to run towards the gunfire. Yeah, of, of course, of course. Of course, that's just a big yeah, thing yeah, right I mean, well, that's, AI does a half time. You throw a flare and they're just like, yeah, I want to see what that flare is, dude. Oh man, so uh, this game also has a lot of tram waiting, if you haven't noticed already, which is actually really great because it gives us the opportunity to do a little bit of looting and any opportunity we get to loot in Nightmare is usually worthwhile because, again, mm -hmm. we have almost zero loot. <laughs> um, and again, sometimes we get tons, other times none. Uh, sometimes we get a ton, but it's not the loot we actually want, so let's check what we have, actually. Actually, we're looking good. So that pipe, that, that blasting app is always in Mission 7. I grabbed that one. Uh, how many flares we got? We got one flare. Okay, cool. Um, if I grab another ethanol here, be good to go. Yeah, I can't believe we're already in Mission 8, dude. I just realized this time is mm -hmm. flying right now, man. 50 minutes. Usually this part of the run eight. is so grindy, dude. It's, it's either Mission 3, Mission 6, or Mission 7 that always does it. Um, they each have their own <laughs> features that can be absolutely run-ending. So what we're doing right now is we're trying to talk to one of the, the marshals, which is currently holding somebody called Wait. Oh, no, is it Wait? No, is it Wait? Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, Marshal yeah, Wait. Yeah, here he is right here. So, um, I wonder if it says on so, his shirt. Um, he's currently uh, keeping Marshall. somebody there, Marlo, who... Um, it ha it's, he's the one who brought across the flight recorder, so we want to ask him some questions, basically. Yeah, Marlo's in that cell. We'll get to walk to him in a bit. If I move past this trash in the ground, I actually have a good chance to soft lock. I don't know why that happens, uh, but <laughs> nonetheless, it's best to play safe, stay behind this crap until uh, you hear Vara Palata can do it. It's always a bit long. So we're almost on to the greatest mission of all time. It's been a rocky road so far, but you know what? We'll get there. Oh, no. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's for your ice cream flavor. Yes. <laughs> oh, my gosh. If That's it doesn't make sense now, you'll see Nulls, in a little bit. Knowles likes, well, yeah. likes rocky road. <laughs> Oh, right, so here's our boy Marlo. So yeah, we have Mission 9 coming up. Uh, right now we're just a bit of lore, but Nico, Nico covered it, so it's top tier. Mission 9, despite the fact it's only an hour to run, I like to consider the halfway point of the run. Reason, uh, for, for a number of different reasons. Um, so we're in Marlo's perspective, and it's a flashback, so we're not Ripley. Uh, we basically, it's like an auto-scroller in 3D, pretty much. And so there's not very much to do. We're in a spacesuit, so we can't run. Uh, it's 11 minutes of, of pressing W and scrolling a couple times. Uh, <laughs> But uh, anyway, with that as well, the U and I mentioned Mission 3, 6, and 7 are all usually deadly in a run. It's a bit of an RNG hell kind of like preparing up to get to Mission 9. Once you survive Mission 9, there's only a few more RNG events that can be run ending. Um, and there's pretty good backup strats for them as well. 
so if you survive till mission nine, usually you can finish out the run unless you, uh, you know, have a Pepega moment like, you know, why I'm in second place instead of first cough. <laughs> no, actually, Mets is Mets is awesome. Oh man, he, uh, he has spent so many more hours on this game than me and I have mad respect for that. Because again, the first few missions can be really grindy when you consider Mission 6 and Mission 7 mm. especially. Like, everything can go pear-shaped from Mission 10 onwards, so everything up to this point, it's like pretty exact almost, in a sense. Yeah, exactly. Other reason it's a good uh, a good break uh, is because we also coming up the very end of this mission we get a, a, like a minute long pee break and it's it's just so nice because you know if you were drinking water uh, like nonstop <laughs> uh, it's it's nice you can just like you know you, you got you got a minute with uh with, you know no stalls. Anyway, I'm gonna drop it over to Nico to explain kind of what the lore of this area is and mm -hmm. then I'll leave it to Kyle after that. No problem. Right. So. Just, uh, just a little bit of preface before we go into this mission is that uh, Marlo basically told us that, you know, um, that uh, yes, I did bring in the flight recorder and all sorts of stuff, and then we kind of mentioned to him that, uh, hey, that's our mum. And he goes, okay, okay, I'll make you guys a deal, I'll let you know what goes on. And what he's telling us is basically this whole flashback. So basically, he's telling us, um, he's telling us that he, he teamed up with a, a, a crew of people to go and venture onto a desolate moon where they found a distress beacon signal. And so they're navigating and finding alternative routes to keep on reaching the source of this signal. And then when they discover it, they discover something, just something quite special. Um, something. <laughs> and then um, we're going to be, um, like I said, this alternative route. There's a, a buddy of ours called Heist, who is going to give us a heist. Um, and touching this little mushroom rock over here actually helps him to kind of navigate over a little bit more towards. Now, because Mission 9 is quite lengthy, I think we can probably get like a good a plentiful of Yeah, honestly, Kyle, we just got like auto scrolling here. The only RNG time losses in this game are how long we wait for people to help us up. Uh, so honestly, just start spewing off uh, donations because I know we probably got quite a few uh, left left uh, up until now. Yeah. We oh, sure so, yeah. do. You're getting lots of love for this run. People awesome, are loving dude. it. Dude, We've got Saturn 9 with $25 says, good luck on the run, Drex. Looking forward to seeing everything that's changed since I last ran Alien. Thanks to Doctors Without Borders for everything you do. Oh, thanks so much, Saturn. I appreciate the good wishes, Chief. We've got $100 from Old Whovian. Nightwatch crew unite for 250K. Alien Isolation is my favorite survival horror game, and I'm looking forward to watching Alien get wrecked. Thank mm -hmm. you, everyone, for the hard work putting this together. Donation goes towards whatever the Kyle Thomas wants. Ooh, that's me. Ooh. <laughs> putting it towards uh, Mario Kart 8, because we want more SGDQ. If I can gotta love the, we gotta love the Mario Kart. Okay. a tiny bit of lore here. So um, we're just going to be exploding um, these little bits of rock here. This is like one of the other alternative uh, routes that we're trying to make. Um, this is why that we are being put up here, so we can go and do this for them. So as soon as we blow up this little section here, they can help us towards more navigation, towards the distress, distress beacon signal. Heck yeah, it is worth noting as well, real quickly, uh, depending on my position, I don't know exactly what, this will either be really loud or not very at all, but if you have headphones, be warned, we're about to explode it right about now. Okay, it was fine today. Sometimes you, like, you get the right angle, it's this really sheer sound that just absolutely destroys your ears, so just wanted to <laughs> warn you guys. And uh, yeah, we just got a bit more waiting. Um, the sky breaks here, by the way, you're not supposed to look up, but you know. Uh, anyways, yeah, so uh, go ahead, Kyle. We, uh, we got plenty of time for more donations. Oh, wait, can I ask a real quick question, Kyle? Oh, yeah, go for it, Nils. To me? Uh, yeah. Okay. Do you think this game rocks? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. That was a I, terrible I, it joke. It definitely rocks. Oh, thank you, thank you. You're, yeah. going, you're very <laughs> welcome. Guys, sorry. I, you know, I, I just want to just declare my absolute love for the, the particular genre of music, dinosaur rock. Dinosaur rock? Why not rock and roll? Come on. I mean, Look, it's, asking it's, me. It's, it's combined, really, isn't it? I, I guess so. Yeah, we got, uh, we got uh, I think... Jeez, I'm losing my chain of thought. We got one major loud sound and... I guess maybe another. I think one that I plan on calling out, though. All right, <laughs> go ahead, Cal. We keep on. We keep you too excited about the run here. No, I, we love it. We love the energy. We've got a haiku from X56 donating five hundred dollars. Oh, wow. dude! The haiku is Amanda Ripley scared, trapped on Sevastopol. Steve better not see. <laughs> I think my heart just started crying. Love that was it. so wholesome. <laughs>
If we get a Ooh, um, there we go. Yeah, dude, 250k hype. That'd be awesome. Can we get a Steve $5 train? Get a whole $5 train of Steve's. That'd be great. Oh, yeah. So, uh, and this is a little bit of law here. So, basically, we're getting closer towards the distress beacon signal. And um, we're now just about to enter the alien spacecraft known as a derelict. Now, this is, like, directly from the movie. So, some people are going to be absolutely thrilled if they've never played this game going inside the dele de uh, derelict. Sorry. And um, we'll be entering it to discover a bit more about what's inside. So, inside is a dead alien known as an engineer. And this is from the film Prometheus as well. So, and that is sitting it in the chair of the navigator and around the area is also some traces of the Nostromo crew alongside with some tracks as well so we want to try and make sure that with this distress beacon signal we turn it off so that nobody else knows about it it's just us that knows about it and that we can explore a little bit more about what's going on um, your friends behind you are going to be setting up a winch to discover a bit more of the base area of the derelicts and a nice little surprise will be awaiting you heck yeah I've just got an idea I know it's not an official incentive but if we hit 200 50k during this run i'll be sure to take my hair down and like whip it around and show the majestic blonde majesty oh yeah we've like, got to donate least. for that yeah dude if we have 250k i will i will I, <laughs> maybe saying whip it isn't the best word i will uh you know so it's almost like you're gonna play that song i whip my hair back and forth yeah whip my hair back and forth dude oh man uh let's see here it's for there's someone else I was singing to. Oh yeah, I keep glancing over the chat and I, I just love all of the support you guys are showing. It's just, you guys are absolute legends. It's it's amazing. Oh man. All right, I'll be quiet. Let's Kyle, Kyle keep reading out the donations. Uh, right, we still well, got here's... another five or 10 minutes in this, five or six minutes in this uh, right. mission here. Yeah, we got plenty. Uh, I got one from Miltonius Prime. Oh, you guys are gonna like this one. It's $10. Why is shooting a space station window a great way to relax? It helps you decompress. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> dad that, jokes. The puns are coming, guys. Here. Keep the puns dad coming. Dad joke hype. Yes, dude. Give me puns. Give me haikus. I want it all. Uh, I've got $25 from Poppin' Waffles. It says, great run. Keep up the energy. Hey, I'm glad you like the energy. Uh, we've got 25 from Molly. It says, this runner is amazing at making this game not scary. <laughs> <laughs> it's actually funny, that's like, my, that's how many my times goal. you speed run the game that the scares do get a little bit removed until Hello, Foxy. the RNG does not go in your favor towards the later missions. Not a spider right. gives $25 saying, best run so far. Best run, dude, that's awesome. Yeah, so we were made, waiting for Meeks this whole time. It's another good, like, you know, water break or something. <laughs> I've got Design Tech DK with $25. Said just had to donate during the <laughs> Alien Isolation Run. Non scappy. And remember non to ask scappy. about the Sevastopol safety protocols. Oh, yes, of course. <laughs> Psycho running is. The, the, the droids are not, you know. <laughs> Psycho running is definitely, uh, definitely against the Sevastopol safety protocols, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, it's like. It's like, it's like those cars that are really silent, so you, you can't even hear them on the road. All right. <laughs> yeah. Electric cars. Electric cars, exactly. Electric, just as electrifying as this run. Ooh, God. All right, here's the beacon that we were trying to walk to this whole time. I'm just going to turn it off, and uh, Kyle, keep going if there's still some more, my friend. Oh, we got plenty more. Josh Perfect. Adams gives $10. It says, Dreyx is one of the most positive and entertaining streamers or video game players I've ever seen. I love this run, and I'm really appreciative for this positive attitude. Thank you so, so much for that. that. <laughs> and it's true, you're doing great. This is a lot of fun. Dude, I'm so glad to hear it. <laughs> I've got $20 from Dawn of Day. It says, loving the energy, Drex. Good luck and keep rocking this speed run. Hey, thank you so much, Dawn. Stevie60 gives $10, saying the energy in this run is hype. Other time hey. zones represent. <laughs> That's right, where my non-central time zone oh, people yeah. at. Mm. I love to note at my door because it's, uh, I think, what, 2 or 3 a.m. for me now? I lost track of time. Uh, I probably have some angry neighbors, but, I, you know, I, <laughs> so I, I, I plug, I plug so GDQ my on, my, on, my, on my door, so hopefully if somebody comes to be angry, we'll, uh, we'll but be But it's right. for a good cause, you know? It is. It's for a good cause. They can, they can sleep some other time. <laughs> Oh man, and this is the pea break winch coming up. Again, as soon as I touch this, I'll be good to go. 
It is. It, it uh, would have to be a quick mad dash, just as an FYI. You gotta, you gotta be a mad dash. Yeah, you got. Gotta have, got have a bit of pressure or something. Let's get uh, one more donation before to go, we go so. to But yeah, we got ten. like another minute for donations now, so keep All them, right, keep well, them rolling, dude. I've got a $500 anonymous donation. Wow. Thank you so much for that. Yo, Mr. Anonymous. Your generosity is amazing. We are getting a little bit of a $5 train rolling. A train with red eyes that need to be tickled. I'm all for it. Ooh, heck yeah. <laughs> That's from Parahelion. We've got Pancakes93 with $5. It says Steve. And we've got Boop Snoot with $5. It says for Steve. For Steve. Make sure you boop the Snoop for Steve, definitely. And then Knowles or Knowlesy gives 25 that says that covers five people for the train, right? Oh Do it gosh, for the majestic hair. <laughs> No, dude. I had to do it, dude. I had to do it, dude. Of course. Had to do it. Had to do it to him. <laughs> had to do it to him. Oh man. So yeah, we got a cutscene now. We're about to skip, but you know, here's all the eggs. Uh, basically, shows the eggs alive and how, uh, you know, how these guys didn't help. Uh, didn't help with the quarantine either. Yeah. So Unless just you're one on one, real time so far. That's Marlo pretty. That's pretty top tier. That he brought an alien on board Sevastopol, but he kept it hidden all this time, up until just now. He's just told Ripley about it all now, so... Naughty, yeah, so, Naughty Marlo. <laughs> Naughty Marlo, I mean, it's a reason he's locked up. Uh, I'm feeling, uh, so we're Mission 10 now. I know so Mission 10 gets a lot of loot. This oh is looting my. phase one. Uh, I don't like that first box was empty. There's a solid chance the next box is empty, too. Mm. Again, I, loot, very, very bad for, uh, for Nightmare. Uh, empty. Vuoto is the Italian word, I should I should know. So Dre is gonna get his first like really like pog champ weapon of the game, yes, which sir. is gonna be the flamethrower. So on nightmare, flame. you actually consume double the flame that you would in other category or like other like difficulties, which is why nightmares like, you know, nightmare. <laughs> Anyways, so, uh, yeah, uh, Dre has to keep that in his head, too. You can see a little needle on it to see how much you have left, but, uh, yeah. Anyways, I'll let you take it from here, Dre. Uh, yeah. I, I, I should just say, this, this is Steve's way, best friend. Yeah, dude, it's oh, pretty no. hot. I'm like, I'm like Coolman from Mission 5, you know. <laughs> Coolman doesn't know how to use a hot, a hot weapon. <laughs> Dre, you know what? I wish you had the, uh, glasses from Dre Cool in, uh... I do, and the I Discord. Get, oh my gosh! Yeah, <laughs> I didn't even think about that. I can totally that. pop those on. All right, hold on, hold on. While we're in the trip, I'll get. I'll, I'll, I'll go grab my favorite glasses for you guys. <laughs> you guys will hate them, and I, it's perfect. So Dre's is gonna be looting a little bit here. Yeah, so we just loot phase two. <laughs> uh, while we wait for the tram, of course, common theme. Elon must join the game. There we go. Uh, but yeah, so he'll be walking around looting a little bit, and then we're gonna take the tram. There's actually four parts to Mission 10. This is Mission I'm, 10's a long one, yeah. Yeah, it's a, it's a long one, but uh, I never really count it's this as part one, but it technically is part one. Y yeah, it kind of is. Um, so this is like the first, yeah, first load. We have basically three load screens in Mission 10. Um. Yeah, that said, uh, time-wise, it's not the longest mission in this category, but it feels the longest because there's four sections. Again, one section, thanks to uh, again a couple a couple of suggestions in this game, uh, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna skip right through the door. Um, you know, honestly, I, like most of the game is really just a suggestion anyway. Yeah, the, the, this game is a suggestion if you believe it so. Also, just to give a little bit of an update, since I'm looking through chat. Um, the game is in Italian because it saves us 30 seconds over English, so just uh, just a little bit of a time save this for be us. A Pog Champ speedrun without some Pog Champ goggles to go with it. These are how these protect my eyes from Steve because Steve is active here, so we got to be careful. Can we get some Pog Champs in the chat? Heck yeah, I got some different glasses too if you want. These glasses will do. These will do. Do these <laughs> glasses make my game so dark? <laughs> Oh, uh, this is actually a little rough. Let's let's see how it reflects. I'm gonna grab that revolver. Dude, you gotta wear the glasses uh, for how bright your future is. <laughs> oh, sorry. I know the wholesome dad joke. All right, I'm so sorry. we're breaking the game a little bit with Steve. We're psycho running away far enough from him that he actually can't hear us now, so we can run regularly, hopefully, and make sure that's out just in case. 
Um, so we're going to run here. The only way he's going to come back to us is after a few minutes when he decides to move from where he is, or if we uh, if we update our objectives, uh, which is going to happen at this terminal right here. Um, if you notice, this is the same area we were in Mission 3 as well. Um, the game, I, I absolutely love just how tastefully this game reuses its zones. Oh, I forgot to check if I can make a smoke bomb. All right, I'm gonna have a bit of a time lapse. I want to check if I have flares or not. Didn't think about it, thinking about the glasses, you know. <laughs> distractions happen, but all well, for, the, all for always, the fun you know. of the run. Steve is the alien, yes. I saw a question there. Oh, somebody asked if the Mission 9 was a flashback as well. Yes, Mission 9 was a complete flashback. That was one of my worst perspectives. So again, now we've got, what we've got to do is we've got to activate uh, individual power like uh, circuits just to kind of like get uh, power to one door which is going to lead us in towards uh, the security area So because we, we're going to be turning off like all the computers and certain areas of the administrator rights of the system lobby area. Um, yeah, so what we're trying to do is trap the alien in this stairwell. Uh, we want to, you know, mitigate, mitigate the threat of C being on the station here. I gotta really quickly check if I have flares. This is, this is not a, a world record strat, I promise. Uh, we only have one. Let's see if I can make it. I can't. All right, we're gonna use the flare. So Dre wants to keep that flare for later missions, but he's got to use it here because it's way too big of a time save to give up you actually can do this with a pipe bomb most of the time it blows up but there is a setup but if you're feeling extra whoa, extra if, if cool no other options you can use your pipe bomb if you have one not extra have one either, cool or extra hot you know, we're, uh, getting, we're getting a marathon approved loot rng of course which is every box is empty all right got to get the rng here oh, of course no bad formation there that's all right too cool for school. <laughs> my class is starting. I like too. that a lot. Too cool I'm for glad school. I'm to fix my sleep schedule after this. Oh, we start right on the hack too. That's a billion RNG compensates for the previous one. And this flamethrower fuel always here as well, which is really nice. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna run around. Steve is about to have a scripted moment, so I gotta make sure that's out. I've soft locked before where I couldn't actually take out the flamethrower, uh, which is not good because of the strategy about you're about to see. Um, I mentioned that we can take advantage of scripted moments back in mission two, and this is a scripted moment right here. I know Steve is about to drop from this vent. About five seconds, four, three, two, one. Yeah, so luckily the uh, flamethrower is hot and cool because, you know, you can get the alien away from you. Heck yeah, dude. I know, we're getting so hot with the flamethrower, I gotta wear the Dre cool glasses. So yes, sorry. and the alien isolation <laughs> discord, we do have an emote for Dre that's Dre yeah, cool with no, him wearing that. Yeah, I think that. he made it too, didn't yeah, you know? yeah, I need so to fix anyway, it. because we flamed him like that, I don't actually know why, but he doesn't drop again, uh, which makes the exit safe. Now we have one more RNG moment. Uh, our friend named Jeremy, who's a reused model a couple times. Jeremy usually is the model that always is on our way too. Um, he has a 50-50 chance to be in our way. He's a revolver. Uh, so if we get him, uh, I'm going to do the, the safe strat and go all the way around. Um... World record, you know, if you're going for world record, what you do is you pop out your flamethrower and you try to get him on fire. It's a little violent. You, you try to get him on fire before he uh, he starts shooting at you. Toast him up just a little bit, you know, just a little bit of flare. Come on. Oh, oh no. Oh, we got Jeremy. That's a bummer. So mm. we got to go around. Um, Wasn't very underworld. cool of him, dude. Wasn't, wasn't, yeah, Jeremy's not very cool either, dude. He's a bit of a hothead. <laughs> oh my gosh, man. All right, we're gonna get this elevator here. Now we're, uh, so this will be finished in section two of mission 10. Yeah, so Drake got right. some cold feet trying to go I the shorter the way. <laughs> I survived Lorenz with the glasses. Yo, if we hit a, uh... all right. So um, this part, see is active, but I, for whatever reason you can run here. It's like, I think he's technically in an animation somewhere we can't see when he makes this sound right here. Uh, but either way, we can run all the way up to the torch, which is pretty nice. We'll, we'll swap glasses in a bit, don't worry. <laughs> I got some I got some even cooler glasses. I, I just recently got them, too. Nice. All right, there's a camera here, but you don't have to worry about it. You can just kind of run through it. And here's a gas torch. This is the Tier 2 torch, uh, which we unfortunately do have to pick up. If not, this, mission, this section would be even shorter. We are going to be quiet now as well. So Dre's going to be doing another plant clip here. It's similar to, or for, it's the exact same one. Uh, yeah, door clip. The same thing you saw in Mission 4, if you have, oh, if yeah, you, uh, if you or we're, we're there for Mission 4. Uh, this door is just a suggestion, just like the previous one. And there we go, just like that. Man, 
I'm on fire with these, dude. I'm oh. on all the way, dude. Yo, Trey, cool off, dude. Come on. <laughs> cool Gotta keep it together. Down, yeah. <laughs> Oh man, I, I can't, I'm actually, I'm glad I survived Lorenz with the Drake cool glasses. That, that plant clipped with a very specific lineup, and so I was like, I can't see this lineup, so I'm glad I got it. All right, this is the fourth section of mission 10. Um, so, I could probably take over yeah. for this little section. Okay, Nico, go ahead and explain yeah, the okay, lore. So, I'm getting way ahead of myself. So here. immediately we're going to be psycho running out of here. Uh, like, as soon as the dialogue finishes, uh, then we can start to either continue psycho, walking, psycho running or just walking from this point onwards. We're going to be heading into the main parts of KG348. And the main reason we want to do this is that we want to try to attract as much noise and attention um, towards KG so that we can basically have the Xenomorph in there and launch it into space so that is not a worry at all anymore um, so to do this we go into the reception of KG and we head over to the emergency power reset um, so we'll discuss a little bit more as soon as we get there as well heck yeah this one is definitely too hot I absolutely agree <laughs> oh man so we're on the lab Steve is active here again as well I think he is just active I feel like I should know these states a little better but I kind of don't know him after Mission 5, <laughs> except for the script adventure. There's quite a few scripted moments here, too. Dre, if you run any hotter, I'm going to have to get in a bath of ice, you know. Hey, that's all right. You know, whatever, whatever helps, whatever helps <laughs> you cool off, you know. We did lose Coolman, so we need a replacement. <laughs> All right, so now that we're at like the uh, p emergency power reset, it's going to bring like a lot more um, power to the uh, to KG, so that we can basically turn off uh, the um, the primary. Well, we can turn on the primary alarm, which will inevitably make a lot of noise and bring the attention of the xenomorph, like oh, more I so to this area. I should know to start See, usually drops through that vent, so I'm going to skedaddle out of this room. Of course, he didn't it this time, you know. Just nine out of ten times, and not this time. All right, continue now, Nico. I'm sorry, I wanted to mention that so, real quickly. No worry, no, no perfect timing, really. Um, so now that we are trying to make our way out, unfortunately, somebody just doesn't want us to leave either. Like, apparently, we are a part of the problem. So, like, um, so the marshal waits and goes, I'm sorry, here you go, get wrecked. And so we're, we're spiraling up into space with the Xenomorph. So we've got to try to basically uh, get into the emergency evacuation vehicle and make a way, uh, try to find a way to get back to Sevastopol. Well, oh, I, your heart is talking right now, Platinum. So I guess that Waits didn't wait long enough. I guess he's not a Waits cool man, though. I just, he said that door is scripted to close, and that's why Sorry. I always love to mess with. I love to mess with new runners and tell them it's timed, and they think I, I, they get to the door and they're like, I just missed it. It's fantastic. I love watching streams. Steve usually runs around this corner. There he goes, just like that. And once he does, we're gonna begin loot, uh, the next loot phase. Hopefully we get some things, come on. Now I, oh, no, no, that's my phone throw. Don't want to reload that. So with the reloading of the flamethrower, we, we don't really want to do that until we get the flamethrower back in mission 1415. It's a bit pointless to reload now, so it, it kind of actually adds, I think we, it adds flame of fuel as well when we pick it up later, I believe. Yep, it's fully charged when you get it. Looks yeah, like Steve is so... not here. I usually just wait here with my uh, my flamethrower out. Oh, oh, he sees me. Grumpy, bo grumpy boy. That's all right. We can get to the cutscene. And uh, yeah, so again, we're floating through space right now. So we're about to use the emergency airlock to get back. As Nico kind of mentioned, I'm so focused. I kind of lost my train of thought here. Uh, but that's this cutscene we're skipping here. Yep. So this cutscene right here is us being launched out, and uh, we actually managed to kind of like get towards like another airlock of Sevastopol, and uh, we just just managed to climb back up, and we're, we're everything's fine, everything's groovy. Um, but you know what? We we do have a little bit of beef with a particular marshal, so we're kind of like making our way back towards him, and uh, we're gonna give him some stern words, some very hot, some very heated words. We're we're not gonna tell Waits to. We're not gonna wait to tell Waits about how we feel. Come on. <laughs> Low hanging fruit, dude. Come on, man. <laughs> I'm short. It's okay. I need the low hanging stuff. Oh man, I'm gonna pray we have a stomaton charge. Uh, I don't know if we do. No, we don't. Oh man, oh, that's a bummer. Well, that's oh. shocking. We have a small chance to get one. <laughs> 
Um, yeah, if we do, um, and though I, I, want, I want to show off one of my favorite glitches, but I don't know if I'm going to get a chance to, which is a big bummer because they're not I mean, awesome. if we do have time at the end, we, uh, like, we could politely ask. That's fair, that's fair. All right, so there's a bit of RNG here, too. I'm saying this, I'm knocking on wood here, um, metaphorically. I've never lost the run to the RNG here. Okay, it's just an Android. We're good. Gonna give him... Oh, I missed! No, the pressure, dude! Oh, that's all right. Well, I was gonna say, I'm gonna give him a little tickle, but I... I choked. <laughs> Wait, did he oh, kill you? No, he grabbed. Oh. Um. Because, you know, again, it didn't kill me. It was good RNG. I just, you know... I just messed up the tickle, it's all right. So the like... shotgun I forgot to mention is our industrial strength tickle tool as well. Mm. We'll use it a little bit coming up. All right, one more chance. Oh, there's a flare. I mean, I'll take a flare. We need that for 13. I'd much rather throw off mission 13 than mission 11. Oh man, anyway, the, the summary of the glitch is we can use the peak key again to reach through this grate and uh, take out the security guard. He has a revolver, and again, revolvers can one-shot, so we want to be as safe as possible. There is a backup strat, um, so I will attempt to employ the backup strat. So what we would do normally, like, if we had a stun baton charge, we would actually do a ranged stun baton, so we could actually kill the most one of the most lethal humans there, so that we can do this whole section a lot easier. Yeah, and it saves a tiny bit of time too because we don't need to do the backup strat. Backup strat, we have to we have to make sure to take out the security guard while we're not waiting for a prompt as well as be silent, which psycho running, you know, we can't turn too sharply left and you're not looking straight ahead, so getting your and getting your lines like perfect is quite a bit more difficult. I wanna be sure I always do this at the wrong time. We got the EMP mine V2. Yeah, so uh, maybe we can get in a donation here. Yeah, sure, they're coming in hot. We've got $25 from Sir Bat Dan. Says Steve trapped in there was like, game over, man, game over. <laughs> Good movie reference. I don't know if coming in hot was intentional, but I love it. To answer you know a question, there are 19 missions, B. We're on mission 11 right now, so we're, we're really about halfway through the run. Um, all right, I could do this strategy here. So basically, because security guards are, I'm gonna be quiet here. I'm gonna use my friend, Mr. Flamethrower. The hot boy. <laughs> um, and I gotta be completely silent in this room. As the door opens, I need to flame it a couple times. There he is right there, that's good RNG. Nice. I chose the worst time to... Brain's not there. You should just, yeah, you should just punch me. That blocked, blocked my camera, that's okay. Man, why did you have to flame the guard so much, dude? Uh, cause he wasn't hot enough I'm for the sorry. run, man. Uh, <laughs> it's like you're almost like in, in, uh, inside a flame wall. Destroyed. Come on, man. Yeah. <laughs> Alright, so the androids are hunting as Ricardo was trying to say. Uh, they happen to get into the room with weight, so we're gonna start his death sequence by walking over there. That staircase. I'm gonna give this guy a tickle. There we go, that was much smoother. And we're gonna be quiet. There's another door around the corner. The one we just came out of, usually there's a droid. Yeah, there he is right there. Just likes to stand around, unless we make some noise. But he's just kind of ominous right there. And we got one more RNG event. Again, knocking on wood. I've only lost a run to it once. Uh, but there's a very rare chance of sniper spawns, and he has a revolver. He has like 100% accuracy, even though it's a revolver. So sometimes with this specific guy, good. it is an almost instant game over, man. It's uh, it really is. I don't know why this guy is particularly sensitive. It's a run ender for sure. All right, this droid doesn't grab you for whatever reason. <laughs> Oh, so just because I saw this in the chat, so Steve isn't in every single mission. Because we blew him out of the airlock, we're actually away from Steve for quite some time. So, uh, yeah, we're going to be pretty yeah. safe here. The game decides to replace the threat with androids, like this guy will grab you, so we got to walk around him. Uh, replace it with angry androids or angry humans. Uh, fortunately, we get a lot of androids, so it's, you know, it's a nice time. Don't forget, the red eyes means bad. Red means bad, dude, yeah. Blue means good. No, it means that they want to hug. Right. And now Mission oh, 11 gives yeah. us a bit of loot too. Now usually all these uh, uh, humans taking a day off, um, usually they have all have loot or they not, none of them have loot. And it would appear my RNG says that not, none of them have loot. So I'm so, really thankful we've got a flare. So law wise right now, like we've just met with Ricardo. He's gonna try and aid us a little bit more in towards uh, trying to get out, get out of the fast pole and like trying to reconnect with everybody. So he's actually gonna help us to like go towards the control room, which is where we're gonna try to find Samuels. 
We actually don't have half terrible loot. I could, I would definitely benefit from a few more ethanol. I'd really like to get this pipe bomb made before mission 14. Uh, there was a backup strat, but I practiced it like three times now. <laughs> I right, no stun baton. All right, now we're gonna go back to the same area we were just in. So the same droids are there. We gotta be a little quiet. Yeah, Steve's, Steve's on lunch. I absolutely agree. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm a little bit he's eating a nice hot bowl of ramen. It's just nice. <laughs> <laughs> Steamy. Mm. Pushing you with a hot and cold joke. Oh my gosh. All right. It's right here. He didn't seem to notice me this time. And then our next droid I, usually has really broken eyes. I don't know why. Usually after we hit him, his eyes duplicate and they move. Uh, we'll see if it happens. Oh, he's on that side. We'll see what happens. Uh, I'm going to try to shoot him so he falls forward just to be sure. With our advanced no tool. No, no he's still falling forward! Ooh. Ooh. Dang it, we can't see his eyes! So, they like to duplicate and move, so they're either right next to each other, like spider eyes, or sometimes, like, distended a foot off his head. It's pretty oh, fun. did you mention the dancing? I did, yeah. Oh, okay, I kind of forgot. I have seen it, though, a little bit there, though. Oh no, Dre, I do like that Katy Perry song, Hot and Cold, you know, because you're hot, hot and cold. cold. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Got him. Oh my gosh, dude. Oh, so just like what we have at the moment. Yeah, loot's looking a little rough, but we, I think we can make it work. We do have enough, uh, quite a bit of med kit loot, which is useful for uh, some coming missions. Sorry. Sunny disposition. These, uh, these jokes are getting a little dry. Uh, hi, hi. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so funny. <laughs> Please, somebody oh, laughs uh, at least one person. Mission 11, though, guys. So uh, we're on our way to, uh, to mission mission 12. That's what's after 11. Thank you, Nico. Y you're welcome. Uh, we, this is another area that starts we use, and then we get something different too. Uh, so again, it's a really cool conjunction of like what you've what you've seen. Alrighty, so we're heading into uh, mission 12. So, um, Dre, how about you talk about like uh, reusing the areas? Yeah, so this area right here is the area we see at the start of mission five. Um, and we're gonna use it at the start of mission 15 as well, which knows and Nico, you guys know what water been drinking. I look forward to that. <laughs> um, it's a nice little break point. Yeah, instead of going there where we did for mission five, we're actually gonna go through this door instead, not the elevator. I mentioned we could grab the pipe bomb. If we were to hang it right and sit and use our iron torch, ion torch, we could grab the pipe bomb recipe there. But again, we, all, we already have it, so we're good to go. Um, and now we're on where we finished off mission seven. Now this terminal's on. Now we're gonna reach over the edge, grab it. Uh, the key code's 8382, it's right on the first page. I don't know why, it brings me the greatest pride of this game, having every key code you need for the run memorized. You honestly do feel like a true hacker man when you can just input those you keys do. just All right, this perfectly. is the one I always choke too, so come on. I'll just type this slowly, actually. Hey, we got an ethanol! Yes, dude! Nice! I, can, I have like one more blasting cap or something I need for a pipe bomb. We uh, just okay. might get this for 14, which will make mission 14 a lot easier. Please take my energy for that. Some take energy emotes will be amazing right now. Oh, man, dude. I gotta grab my other cool glasses, don't I? <laughs> I'll grab them on the way out of mission 15, how about that? Cause uh... Yeah, that sounds about right, right, yeah. <laughs> I've been drinking way too much water, dude. So we're just constantly making our way up towards like finding Samuels. This is just like a whole like w like way around trying to get towards um, the Apollo secure transit area because we're going to be like trying to like talk towards um, like uh, the different oh, AIs of Sebastopol and a whole lot of other things. It's just it's just making our way downtown, walking past. So, <laughs> past we're about to do a glitch, but I guess like I had it myself. I missed it, so never mind. I can at least make the joke that elevator is getting pretty hot down there. <laughs> Yes, yes, uh, how to do it. Uh, we, got, we got a droid that's going to want to grab us. Um, and so, yeah, I'm, 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 I'm prepared to kindly suggest, right? That's what we do. All about suggestions in the game is suggest. We're going to kindly suggest that he doesn't grab us. Just like Yeah, that. we don't want to get into a heated debate with them. Yeah, <laughs> dude, we'd be... <laughs> the droids cool, really like to make one. some pretty <laughs> cold arguments. I got a blasting gap, dude. I nice. think we got the pipe bomb now. Wow, nice. you are getting easy, really good loot. Easy money, mission 14. Uh, so mission 12 is a mission of relays. I should know. We have, I think, 10 of these. Uh, these things here are the relays. I should note. 
We gotta turn them all off. <laughs> what are we on now? Four? Three? I think three. This right turns on. Uh, so we're gonna psycho run faster. And grab this one right here. Oh, I missed that prompt. That's all right. So in a no major glitch one, you'd have to run here and you have to be very, very careful not to take too much damage from one of the androids that have come behind you. Yeah, no major glitch is a whole different beast all of its own. Indeed, indeed. I like nightmare mode, but I'm not, not quite crazy enough <laughs> to, to run nightmare no major glitches. And uh, we get to see Samuels here being a bit, uh, you know, showing this droid who, who, uh, who wears the pants. Mm. A heated exchange. It is, really. Which is kind of funny because these are such cold machines. Mm. Samuels is a little bit hot-headed, you know. He really is, yeah, dude. Fiery temper. Sometimes you gotta Sorry, be, you I'm know? Sorry, I'm stopping. <laughs> Short fuse if no you ask me, dude. No for no crouch okay, clipping. let's continue. Uh, it's a good glitch check, but I gotta explain another glitch coming up here, so I apologize. So yeah, um, this next thing, we're supposed to have a big battle battle with a bunch of androids. Uh, one of them has a key card to get into a room that we need. Now, fortunately, the same droid always has a key card, so we know exactly what that one is. We can only do damage once they turn on. Which happens right here. We're gonna use our industrial circle tool and a bop. Grab that key card and then this tickle tool. And we're good to go. So yeah, the game tries to prepare us, but you know that's that's slow. So we're just gonna we're gonna hop our way through here. I guess we're not really hopping. There's you can't actually jump in this game. <laughs> you oh, can't man, technically take really full eight, damage though. Five? You can technically, yeah. Oh, I think the only time you take fall damage is if you're glitching the game out anyway. Mm. To my knowledge. There's one vent in particular that if you t if it thinks that you're falling, it's gonna just make Ripley just go ah! like yep, all the so time. Yeah, so we got the pipe bomb. We are. I was worried I wouldn't get one for 14. Oh, I didn't mean to pause. That was a, a misclick. It's alright. It's part of the strategy, actually. Mm. I should also mention as well with the flamethrower. Um, the way that we actually use the flamethrower is that we do it in very very short bursts because this helps us to retain the most amount oh, of fuel. Yeah. That's a key thing to note for sure. So you yeah, see, like, just a quick tap of the of the button assigned. Yeah. So Ripley's gonna get into about a bit of a steamy situation here. Uh, mm -hmm. We have three vents that can damage us. Uh, they do between 140 to 100. Sorry, 120 to 140 damage. Of course, I got bought by two. Now we do want to get hit by at least one of them, um, and that's coming up for a glitch in mission 13. But we'll get to that later. Uh, that's why I don't want to take all damage because you know there are more androids coming up. Dre, stop uh, blowing hot air, mate. Come on. But yeah, so you know this is another move <laughs> that we have rem memorized, uh, so you can you can take note of how much damage you have in the run or how much health. Because uh, again, nightmare, you get no health HUD. So nice. We got good RNG in the third at least. Yeah, so one of the biggest learning curves to this category is memorizing how uh, damage you take. We actually do have really good resources in the AI community over how much damage things do, but you still mm -hmm. kind of have to figure out how to estimate how much health you have because you obviously don't want to die during the run. We pretty much do it fully deathless, if possible. Yeah, yeah that's, that's the plan. All right, so we got some droids in here. They're sleeping, so we got to shh, shh, shh. I mean, especially since it's 3 a.m. for how you guys are. It's me and Fair. 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 We're on Team Wabbits. Oh, dang. <laughs> oh, yeah, so this camera always, always wakes them up. So we just want to, like, you know, not My mess up this like combination. All the up. <laughs> Otherwise, we get a really weird, really weird information on the exit, so. And let's hope we don't get dialogue glitch. Uh, though it doesn't break the game, it uh, doesn't validate a run. I guess it saves time, but, you know. Uh, so if we do I get this thing get called a dialogue glitch, which is basically where the, the dialogue won't occur, but the, the operation of like the next bits will come sooner, we add on time, basically. Exactly, yeah. So, oh man, so like I mentioned, Samuel's an Android. Here's the proof. See, he sounds like metal. Uh, but yeah, it's, if, if we get, it's kind of weird. It's the game, again, finish just some missions or quest lines depending on like how quickly the dialogue ends so if there is no dialogue because it doesn't load in well then you know <laughs> it, it just goes right through the right through the sequence those whispers so this section here um for the casual player, like um, they might not realize just how easy the uh, uh, the pattern is. Um, all you got to do is go around clockwise, because it gets you to look at like specific color and go to the terminal to throw the wrench. Just go clockwise. Gamers go right. I know the terminal games go left, but in this turn, gamers go right. 
Yeah, yeah, it's a pretty straightforward sequence. So, um, Let's go to it. currently, Samuels is trying to connect with Apollo, which is like the AI of Sebastopol, to try and say, like, you know, the, the threat of the Xenomorphs have been removed, um, but um, Apollo is basically saying no, and it's trying to, it's trying to um, uh, attack and uh, uh, hurt Samuels for trying to connect with them. So we're trying to basically help Samuels from that happening uh, by bringing the power down, essentially. Oh man, I so think Samuels you know, is kindly suggesting as well. So if we don't have any more lore, I think we got it covered. Uh, we got time for donations. I, I realized I almost forgot to call some out. So uh, yeah, Kyle, take it away. Yeah, sure. Away. These these donations are coming in like hotcakes. Uh, <laughs> got a hundred dollars from Shiz Chiz. Really enjoying Drex's enthusiasm on this alien isolation run. Keep the hype up. Hey. <laughs> On the topic of hype, we are just over 7,000 away from hitting that 250k. Let's keep that rolling. Ooh, that's awesome. Twirlin Curtis gives $25. Says, this alien isolation run has me feeling so good, it makes me want to, it makes my heart want to burst from my chest. <laughs> hey. <laughs> Better than uh, the stomach. Anonymous gives $100. Hot, Says, very enjoyable run, lads. Hot and spicy. Mm. Just like my ramen. <laughs> oh my gosh. Also, please right. keep donating so we can hit 250k. Dre will whip hair his hair, hair around. Hey, Dre, oh, I, I might even throw in. a dab in there too. I know it's pretty. Dre, uh, can you see that? Saucy. Can you see that? Oh, uh, I might have missed something. Right, I gotta be quiet here. Uh, we got some droids, and half the time they grab you, half the time they don't. So we'll see here. Oh, I dodged the camera! You are good, dude! I almost never get that formation. What? Easy exit. Oh my gosh. I skipped the charge pack. We only need one of them and we're guaranteed to spawn later on. I saw a sensor here on the way in, though. So I'm gonna grab that. Oh, I'm full. Never mind. Um, and now I gotta be sure not to scroll on this next prompt. If I do, I can fall through the tram and soft lock the game. This one we can't recover from, so it's, you know, heckin' important to make sure that we uh, press the button just, you know, safely. Oh, man. Oh. Uh, yeah, we got the way back down. <laughs> I feel like there's something I've completely missed here. One thing we do need to be careful here is not scrolling the tram. Yeah, uh, yeah. Because if we scroll the tram, it will actually despawn this little tram, and then um, we'll just fall down and die. Fall to the ground, yeah. Oh, man. Yeah, it's not a very epic uh, glitch to have in the game. You can actually do it even if you just hit E twice, right, uh, so which is really another, unfortunate. We got another tram to call, and with the common theme, we got to wait for it. So I'm going to go grab that loot that the game tried to prepare us with uh, for the droid fight. Um, we're gonna get three Molotovs, three EMP mines, two med kits, a couple recipes. Uh, this one's the noise maker here, for example. And so law is right, right now, Samuels is basically, as his final sort of last message, is asking us to try to deactivate um, the further systems. Like, he could only do so much before Apollo rejected him, so we're going to go on a sort of, like, a, a, a boded mission to appease his last words. Yes, yes, so Apollo was, sorry, Samuels was at least able to tell Apollo to give us a tram, or to unlock the transit, so that's what we're doing now. Oh man, and uh, yeah, while well, we wait uh, to get into mission 13, feel free to read off a few more donations, Kyle. Yeah, you got it. Morgan27 gives $50, says, Love this game and loving this run so far. I was never so brave as to attempt this on Nightmare Mode, so not only do I not... Not only do I get to see what it's like, but I get to learn some Italian along the way. Buona hey, fortuna! <laughs> hey, that translates to good luck. <laughs> hey, there you go. Hey, he knows Like I said, I, I knew more than I, than I really should. <laughs> We've you got a lot of me, donations so wanting that majestic blonde hair flip. The majestic, oh, perfect, dude, heck yeah. All right, so let's see, I got these ready. Perfect. All right, so we're on mission 13 now. We're kind of above Apollo core. Um, and this has another, like, probably, I think, the, not necessarily the biggest, but a relatively major skip in the run. We're gonna skip most of the challenging part of mission 13. Uh, I just did a glitch here as well, where I start placing the weapons as security's rejecting me, so saves me like a second, so I don't have to wait for this door to open. 
So M13 was pioneered basically by InfoMaster. Cliffs was also another big contributor to it, but InfoMaster deserves a lot of credit here because he spent an enormous amount of time finding this uh, keyhole for us. So Dre's eventually going to go into a vent and he's going to break his camera with a med kit and a flare. It's really bizarre that it, you know, it works <laughs> in the first place. But he's going to be breaking his camera because we can walk around while peeking, basically, or we have peak height. And we're gonna use that to grab the save through the wall. Uh, it's gonna be really cool when Dre gets there. Um, obviously. It is, yeah, it's the, arguably the hardest, actually, hardest by a long shot glitch in the run. Um, most people only go for it if they're crazy or they're desperate for world record. So, you know, me fitting both categories, it's about perfect. <laughs> um, so what we just do, we turn off the conduit power. We gotta crawl through a big, otherwise shocking vent. Uh, so we gotta make sure it doesn't shock us. Um, but yeah, so as Noles was saying, there are two, two stages to the glitch. Um, I'll attempt to do them quickly enough, they'll look like one, but yeah. <laughs> And I think Cliff's discovered that we can the camera break anywhere. Is that right? Yeah, that is correct. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, we have two different two different people that found two different glitches that we can combine, and uh, it's it's an awesome result. It looks really really cool, to be honest. Does, At least yeah. for me, it, it was. Uh, we used to use another strat where we basically would go towards one of the androids and break our camera on the panel. That was absolutely was, terrible yeah, to RG do, helps. and it was like. Mets is uh, gonna hate me, by the way. I forgot to pre-crouch. I'm sorry, Mets. Oh. I know you're gonna watch this. I'm so sorry. <laughs> You've been reminding me. I did get, the, on, I did get the falls and the stun fall though. Oh man, so yeah, the first time I tried to learn this glitch, I quite literally spent over two hours sitting here, staring at this wall, trying to get the clip. <laughs> if that puts some respect to how tricky it is. All right. So there's my camera break. It looks a little weird, but not too bad. I'm gonna just try to eyeball this lineup and... Oh my gosh! First try. That's hey, a nice. Right that's there. a really, that, that dude. That surprise. is like... Yeah. Oh, Marathon luck. So that was, um, that didn't really show off how tricky it is, because I just, like, did that instantly. Nice, we got a white mini game too. There's three colors of mini games in these, uh, green, white, and yellow. Uh, the greens are so-so, we actually exit out of them to get a different mini game. Whites are the fastest, so those are pretty nice as well. Dude, too bad I don't have lights would open. This might be a mission 13 gold, man. And we're the Paul Hawk. It has five symbols. It's an exception to my Axis Schooner. Rule, and we're finally gonna heal. So I need to be injured in mission 12 uh, in order to actually use the med kit to break my camera. Nice, I have full health, very nice. I can't heal, so <laughs> we're good to go. I'm gonna buy my mulls, I'm oh, sorry, my pipe bomb and my EMP mine now. Again, by you pressing the number I want on it. I'm just gonna check I've got everything. Oh Beautiful. my gosh, Dre, I really hope you're looking at the chat when you pulled that off. Like, honestly, that was... That so was, good. Man, that was really clean. Running. The chat erupted in a fiery response. A fire, Sorry, dude, yeah. I do like some fire, some explosive replies. Aww. So cool, dude. <laughs> we were way of using this joke. So we skipped a cutscene. <laughs> uh, basically, the summary of the cutscene is that we uh, we tried to talk to Apollo ourselves. We're saying, hey, the aliens off the station, open up comms. I want to get the heck home. Apollo's like, nah, you're wrong, dummy. Uh, there's still an alien the station. I don't know what it is, but you know, we gotta protect the quarantine protocols, so uh, go check it out. So it's sending us down to the engineering decks to find out where the alien on the station is. And as soon as this fades out, we're done with mission 13. Heck yeah, dude. Oh man, I am so curious what that mission 13 time was. Honestly, I'll have to go back and like time it because that's, uh, man, that's something. So we're on mission 14. I bound the items already. I have full health. Uh, we should be good to do. I only have one pipe bomb though, so I do have to go for a risky strat. Uh, it's not super risky, but um, and I'll explain. A I'll show it a little more. Uh, we basically need to get lucky with the timing of a droid. Pure explosion and having Taco Bell. Oh my gosh, Mew. <laughs> That, the image that, that does not give me a warm feeling. 
so... Oh, no, go ahead. No, 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 you can go ahead with it. It's all I good. I don't even know what I was going to say. Go ahead. Oh, okay. So mission 14 is probably one of the spiciest missions. <laughs> Anyways, um, so we're going to be going into uh, a very um, uh, cool area with... Uh, a few surprises, you know, mm. uh, a few uh, heated moments, and uh, no. Uh, a right here for the droid, the way, is and our torch V3. Yeah, exactly. We would use this torch to open the vent, but we have we have another suggestion for the game. That's why I've got the EMP in my mouth. Unlike the smoke bomb, I will use one of them for the intended purpose, but this one's the hardest point clip, so I got to take a little time on the lineup. Nice, there we go, beautiful. Oh, <laughs> and then I go the wrong. Way. That's okay, you know. <laughs> My chat's to the left, so that's where my brain was. That's my excuse. <laughs> um, and yeah, again, Mission Torch, we gave up the weapon, so we don't have any tickle tools right now. So it's really useful to be able to grab that loot that we that we really have gotten that we otherwise got in Mission Twelve. <clears throat> so that plant clip is actually a lot harder than it looks. That's actually mm -hmm. the hardest one in the game, uh, or well, at least for AM No CC. Yeah. Right. Um, Intended use. We're making that droid, oh, we're forcing that droid to do a little party. There's a baton charge! Nice, we can use that in mission 17. It won't show yes. off the glitch quite as well, but we still, we still will be able to do a range stun in 17. Uh, right, we are gonna- a slow, so I might use my other MP mine. Hopefully not. Oh man, but big boy's coming over here. Don't grab me, big boy. I don't want to deal with you. Just wants a hug, dude, come on. Uh, he wants a tickle is what he really wants. Oh, yeah, it is. Sure. So he has to walk around at least. Did we get a little bit of time? That was pretty close, dude. And nice. He canceled the fall as well. The timing on that's pretty close. Again, not the end of the world. Saves like maybe half a second if you uh, if you if you get the, the cancel fall. But it, it's it's a good flex as well. Again, we're all about those flexes in this run. So. Mm -hmm. And there's a ladder up there. Again, we gotta get rid of the wrist key strategy. So what I need to do is I need to enter a key code into a terminal. I can't use my numpad in the terminal as well. Uh, and there's a droid that is probably gonna be in my way. Now the androids can grab you while you're, I gotta wait here for a second too, just to prevent a soft lock. Droids can't grab you while you are in, a, in an animation. Uh, so we're gonna hope the timing is just right that I get four punches. Yeah, he's right here. All right, we're going to be forced to grab the bolt gun. And come on, you got to punch me in just a little bit. Please punch. Nice punch. One, two, three. Oh, my God, I mistyped it. Four. Uh... Oh, my. We're, we're still all right. We're still all right. There's, um, there's some uh, fun throw field right there, too. Oh, my gosh, dude. Nice. So I uh, I don't know if I took four or five health? punches. I messed up. Uh... Well, I'm alive. <laughs> Shockingly low. Shock. Uh, uh, I, I, could, I actually didn't hear uh, when I got four or five punches. I heard a swing, but it's not like a swing and a miss. So I guess we'll find out here. Let's heal up once because he did at least 45 damage and we're full. So he only hit four times. So yeah, we, uh, we, we got a little lucky there. Um, I, I hate to say it, I hate to be the meme, but that's never happened before. Uh, usually if I mess up the key code, count now. I think it's five. If I mess up the key code, he almost always gets the timing to grab me. So that was pretty fortunate. And some scrap on that. We're, we should be about full on scrap. Now we get our two tickles, two tickle tools back, which is really nice as well, because we got a lot of androids below. Um, now these are super droids instead of regular droids. And what super droids do? Uh, well, actually, they're a little bit, a little bit more predictable. You have to, uh, you have to tickle them while they're grabbing you in the animation. But they take a little bit longer to grab the animation, and so you're, uh, you're good to go on there, or should be. We'll see. We'll see what happens. Very, very soon we are going to be coming up to most and everyone's favorite part of the Yes, animation. well, it's my favorite part, that's for sure. He turned around a little early. I'm not a fan of that. Yeah, I don't like you turning around this early, buddy. That's not common. All right, tickle one. Now, we have about eight seconds before the next one will grab me, so he's going to punch down to 89 health or 890 health. Uh, we got good RG, so there's not a second over here. That's fantastic. Yeah, so these are Super Joes, which are the stronger variants of the normal uh, working Joes that we've seen in earlier missions. So Super Joes do more damage, can't be affected by EMP mines, 
they have more health they Yo. are just a very big nuisance to us mm. yeah absolutely oh my gosh i saw somebody say i'm gonna crash i'm so hyped up on caffeine the run <laughs> kept getting shifted later and later than i anticipated so <laughs> like those drugs those oh, super man. drugs are such a pain in the suggestion Pain in the suggestion. It's uh, it's Steve's it's Steve's gamer room. So we want to kind of get out of here fast. They, uh, oh my god! Steve's gaming ten, you know. Well, there's Mountain Dew somewhere in here. I know it. So there's a face hugger. But as soon as we press this, face hugger despawns, so we're good to go. Maybe that's uh, the liquid on the floor. Spawn, so that's why I walked backwards into the left. Dude, where are the and, Doritos uh, at? Xenos are not a threat until this thing goes into the ground, excluding our scripted boy coming up. So let's just crouch run here. Or psycho run, jeez. All right, I'm gonna wait a little bit of time for the objective to update and then we're good to go. He's scripted, so he doesn't look unless I make too much noise. All right, gonna make sure flamethrower is out, perfect. And one of the main reasons that like this is so much easier on a no CC or CC run is the the psycho running. Everybody has to deal with like the the pure terror of not being too loud so that you attract. This one the, doesn't despawn. The xenomorphs at all. And uh, this xenomorph up here is scripted as well. So we just run around. <laughs> it's a good flex. I'm crawling here now. It is important to note the xenomorphs cannot fit in this tunnel, so he won't he won't be able to follow me in here. There's also no vents in this room, so we're gonna do a cool trick um, where we make a lot of noise in here, so that the xenomorphs want to get to me, except that they can't. So they go into the vent instead, thinking it'll help them. I, again, I don't know if it's intentional quirk to the AI or an accident, but it helps out with the run nonetheless. So uh, actually, uh, my, uh, I know oh, we're yeah. far past it, but uh, it was the first time that we saw a face hugger in the entire run. So face huggers are this like the mini xenomorphs. I don't even know what the they are. To... Yeah. So um, yes, yeah, they want to give you a slot. Doesn't care. Yeah, they want to um, give you a sloppy kiss, so you gotta be careful. I'm about to do one of the few strategies I have actually contributed. I'm gonna shoot a revolver shot down the hallway. Uh, they can spawn in either hallway, and I need one of them to spawn in that one on the way out. So hopefully it works. We'll see. I gotta run here because I get stuck. It's a weird feature. You can't really see if I did it right. Oh. Oh, he went behind me, but he, he took long enough to decide we're okay. And there's a hugger down here. Give him a, a, little, a little touch of our warmth, you know, our warm love. That face hugger there actually ends a lot of people's, like, <laughs> runs sometimes, and a lot of people who I've play for the first time never know. I've lost a couple runs that hugger, yeah. It's just to forget about him. And this meta strategy used to be used to, used to, be to use your shotgun. All right, come on, no drops. Nice. Safe nice. exit of the nest. Beautiful. Sometimes Excellent. Beautiful oh my gosh. nest, mate. Congratulations, you won. Yeah. won. I can't do it. I have my water here. I admittedly had way too much water, so I'm oh. waiting for mission 15. Congratulations, you won. There we go, that's my yeah, there, yeah, there it is. All right, so here's why I wanted the pipe bomb, or at least coming up in a bit. We've got a bunch of androids here. <laughs> Alrighty, sorry, just because I saw in the chat, so uh, VR, you can do some of these strats, but you can actually do some crazy things in it. Um, you can actually grab things through the wall. You can like this straight up walk through walls if you really wanted to. Um, sorry, I know that's like way off of like this run, but I thought I'd just mention nice. it. Good, good RNG on this mini game here. Did I take him out? Nice. Okay, so we took these three androids out, all with one pipe bomb. We got one more android friend here. He's gonna try to grab me. I'm gonna use my peak key to quickly uh, cancel. That was a green one. We don't like those. I'm gonna use my peak key to quickly cancel the reload animation so I can just shoot three shots back to back. So law-wise right now, we're basically trying to overload the alpha and the beta cores, which would essentially cause like a huge EMP of um, of Sevastopol in the, in the reactor core area. Um, this this in cool. hoping that we do this would actually kind of like get rid of the xenomorphs as well. Um, that's what I'll say towards that actually. That's, that's where I'll end my sentence. Heck yeah, dude. Oh man, I, I don't recall hearing that sound before, but my audio setup's a bit different for this run uh, to, to work with GDQ Tech, so that's probably why everything sounds a little bit different. I'm grateful that I haven't lost uh, to a Xenomorph because of my different audio, too, speaking of which. It's a little harder to hear him in the vents, so. Well, uh, you know what? We got, this, we got uh, one section more ladder here for the reactor purge, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna take the reactor purge as a bit of a bathroom break. I, I, hate, to, I hate to leave during a run, but man, I... The, way, the chair will be here to, to keep us company. It's all good. It's all good. I'll let you guys. I'll let you guys keep them going. I'm very distracted trying to. Uh, 
Why? Trying to focus on the run. No, I'll say that. Yeah. <laughs> bonding agent there. Imagine speed running, right? Oh, dude. All right, we got a droid here. Give him a little tickle with our shotgun. Now I gotta reload this bad boy. Oh man, we're almost to the purge. So we'll, get, we'll be greeted by a lovely cutscene during the purge as well. And during this little moment, we'll be able to have like a, a good like couple of donations for sure. Great. Making our way downtown. Yeah, there we go. Now good, that's good stuck in my head. Yeah, oh, me too, dude. I can't even visualize like the piano playing. Yeah, there we go, dude. I love it. Dude, I like every the time. Stagger stop, but that's okay. Uh, we're gonna be getting the purge, and I'm gonna skedaddle for just a minute. Oh, jeez. Oh, there it is, right there. All right, let's get some donations in then. All right, this one might generate some reactions. <laughs> uh, Middleman34 gives $5, and it is a question for the couch. Alien or mm. aliens? Also, awesome run. Your energy is contagious. Oh, uh, ooh. If we're talking specifically about the movies, I'm a bit more privy to aliens. Yeah, me too. Well, for me, it's me alien all the way. And that's okay. We can have different opinions. <laughs> uh, we've got a donation from Cold for $10. Yeah. Says, so sorry I'm going to miss out on this run. Curse my job. But Dre, good luck, my main man. And remember, non scapi. I don't know if my pronunciation's right on that. We've got Rune14 given $25. Says, let's go, Dre. The alien community is so proud of you for showing off the game. Oh my gosh, guys, we I love appreciate you. your patience. I was, I was not planning for that. <laughs> Okay, the door just opened up. I only lost a couple seconds there. That was a nice speed run right there, dude. Yeah. Oh, man, dude. I was, I was so distracted through most of Mission 13 and Mission 14. And I'm like, I I don't know if we're going to make it to the purge. Like I said, I had way too much caffeine before this run today. <laughs> I was expecting it to run at 10, and I started running at about 1.30, so. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Glad I yeah. survived, though. Normally, 15 is, like, our area to do that, but, uh, you know, when nature calls, you know. Mm -hmm. Nature calls, mm -hmm. dude. I was, like, I was fine doing Mission 9, too. I'm like, yeah, no, we're fine. I mean, I've been watching my water intake. Fortunately, I can get one. I'm I'm very thirsty. Um, and, uh, you know, to celebrate the good Mission 14, I feel like it's a good time to uh, to show off my, my other set of glasses. Oh, nice, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, no, you haven't seen these ones yet. I'll, I'll take my Wait, head well, out of the oh, I'm kind of excited. Uh, yeah, Kyle, feel free to read a few more donations. Uh, we'll have a lot of time in the next two missions, but we got, we got a little minute here. You got it. Anonymous is given $50, says, This run is giving me life. Hey, that's so great. Appreciate that. Quazel gives $20. So seeing Drex proudly share his skills and passion makes me feel so happy. I've been watching GDQ with my wife for five years and love how it's a platform for so many beautiful and talented runners to share their love for this hobby. Thank you, Quazel, that sent chills down my spine. <laughs> Heck yeah, dude. Um, oh yeah, dude, we got those gamer goggles now. <laughs> I love the glasses. All right, Kyle, I think we got time for one more here. Oh, sure. Michelangelo my gives $10, says, I stayed up all night to see this run and it was totally worth it. Keep up the high energy and let's make that 250K happen. Dude, let's get it, that'd be awesome. All right, so this is the same area we were for mission six, and, sorry, mission five and mission 12. Uh, we're doing it one more time for mission 15 here. Um, except we're going to the store instead. Now that we have the uh, Ion Torch to actually get through this panel. So what the lawn right now is, is that we're going to be trying to go and go towards a short range ambulance so that we can try to um, help Taylor out a little bit more. Um, so we're going to try and make our way over to the Anisadora. Um, and... Um, I'm oh, sorry, I've forgotten the line. Oh, sorry, dude. Yeah, yeah, brain, my, my brain is fine. It's like really, really early for me. Yeah, but, you know, due to uh, Steve's explosive attitude, we unfortunately have to get to the Anisadora to uh, talk to our good friend Marlo, so... We do. Yeah, yeah, we're gonna back to Marlo. I'm oh, sorry, I'm really squeezing really this, not gonna I, lie. I, I, I got these, I think, four days ago. <laughs> I have not done a run, and man, they are dark, so... Uh, oh, we, got a, we got a friendly super droid here. 
Sadie didn't say none, Scobby. That's his classic line. Uh, we're gonna run here. Steve is active, um, so if he decides to look, we want him for, want him to look for us there instead of where we're gonna be. Um, and we're finally gonna grab our, our tier three access tuner. Now we're gonna be real gamers. Now we get five symbols, which means five times the party spirit. Well, I want all you guys to unleash your spirit animal now. So is at this it point is, that it's Drake's watched a lot of the film Hackers to kind of get the right enthusiasm to do these hacks. Actually, I, I spent hours on a third party hack. Like, hours. <laughs> hey, Nethanol, nice! I don't think we need it anymore, but, you know. At least the game decided eventually yeah, to be nice. Loot. Yeah, loot. Okay, yeah, sorry, I just gotta work. mention it. So, Nico, mm -hmm. when you're mentioning, like, making our way downtown, mm -hmm. I don't know why I always think of somebody, like, aggressively pressing the keys, like, while doing it. I, I'm <laughs> sorry. I know it has no relation to this run at all, but, like, I don't know. I just think it's funny to think of it like that. Aggressively walking. Yeah. yeah I'm sure. I see Cross Isn't that alien? sees my, uh, my dance fat hack. Yeah, I love rhythm games, too. They're a bit trickier to speedrun. Um, and I think Happy Feet has a bonus run, is that right? For Pump It Up? Ah, oh, man, I wish I remember. He's a lot better than me, though, so... Um, if you guys want, contribute to that incentive, because, uh... He's showing me up any day. Definitely oh. check out Happy Feet. Definitely. Yeah, Happy Feet is a legend. We could probably take a couple of donations Oh, right yeah, exactly. So Mission 15, basically we're going to walk through the Anissa door. We're not a Sebastopol anymore, but as we do, there's not much interesting that happens that goes on. So Kyle, just, yeah, feel free to start reading up. I think we got to get caught up anyway. Yeah, that sounds great. Uh, C Rain gives $100. Hey. They say the world is so hectic right now. Let's make it a little bit better, but not for Amanda. Save those frames and get her out safely. <laughs> Dang. Gosh. Uh, Mr. Onion gives 10 bucks saying night crew hype horror hey. block done right. Thank you everyone. This goes to runner's choice. Emmy Rose gives $25 says I came here to get scared, but this guy's energy is too much fun. Good luck hey. on the run. <laughs> and anonymous gives $5. It just says no, Steve. No. <laughs> <laughs> Only one so far, Mission 3 video. Oh man. Props. Yeah, if we were to keep going, we just got some hacks. <laughs> you got it. Props gives $10, says five buck train for Steve. 250,000, let's see that hair flow. Hey. Just a reminder, <laughs> if you're just showing up, if we hit 250K during the Alien Isolation run, Dre will unleash that beautiful golden unleash. mane. Can we get oh, another five dollar hype train though? Yeah, let's get a, let's get a hype train rolling. Hype awesome Muta awesome, gets twenty five dollars for that majestic blonde hair flip. Yes, dude. Nabe Shugs gives five dollars a five dollar train <laughs> a five dollar Steve train haiku. Hey, my name is Steve. No, really, I'm Steve Sugar, not a xenomorph. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, I love it, dude, absolutely. All right, so we have one threat in Mission 15 in this section. It's right here, there's a face hugger. Uh, so being the only threat, it's really easy to choke. Fortunately, we're okay. Just a small note, now we just got some more hacks and a bunch of right turns, so uh, Kyle, feel free to keep going. You got it. Anonymous gives $5, $5 more for the golden locks. Yes, dude. People are feeling it. Uh, Rebel Moogle 79 gives $25, says, I was gonna go to bed, but then this run came on. Also, Steve is a snack. Mm. Hey, I totally agree, man. He is an Ooh, absolute woo. cute bean. <laughs> A little bit acidic, oh, but dude. just, just punion to the taste. <laughs> uh, Fristy Boy gives 20 bucks, says, have to see that hair. Yes, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Echo Echo gives $5, says, Dreyx's energy is keeping me going through this long night at work. Keep it up, Steve Train. <gasps> Sounds perfect. I wish the best on your luck, by the way. Um, all right, I'm gonna do a quick cover of this cutscene. Basically, this cutscene is, in fact, a data log um, recovered from uh, Nino Stromo, um, uh, Ellen Ripley's ship. Again, Amanda Ripley is Ellen Ripley's daughter. So we finally learned what happened to her, but basically she, she says that, uh, they, they had a they had a creature and it's terrifying and you know Ripley knows what that is but Alan didn't assume so she disappeared and did what she had to do 
for that. Now, this would have been my uh, my cutscene that I would have taken my, my break on, but I, I have way too much caffeine, dude. Um, but anyway, yeah, so uh, Taylor's gonna get Marlo, but we still got time for a bunch more donations. Cool, we got him. Uh, Comey Neko gives $7.77. Says hi from Comey, Foxo, Butter Mage, and Hoodie. Keep up the power energy, Yo, mate. I'll squad. need some to oh siphon gosh. off of that, uh, some of that later. Heck yeah, extra love for them. Again, they're some of my OGs that have supported me trying to get this run to GDQ. Uh, so thank you so much, guys. I really appreciate that. Um, and the, I continue going. I keep, I keep interrupting. I'm, no, so, I'm too excited good, man. today. The Ycrad gives $25. Says, loving the energy of this run, you can never have enough dad jokes. Heck yeah, dude. That is a fire comment. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> Sterner Stock gives $50. No comment, but thank you so much. All of that going right to unleashing the beautiful blonde hair of your runner, Dre. Yeah, <laughs> oh, man. Gildane so gives $25, Marlin. no comment. People want that hair release. Dude, I'm glad. I spent a lot of years on it. It's Taylor Trust gets me, when you, see, when you see the looks, off now? it is a lit experience. I, I figured I should have my hair down, get my hair up, because I'm like, I'm going to mess with it the entire stream. <laughs> Uh, we no, got we Laura G sending in $25, says, Steve is a sneaky dude, but Dre is far faster and much cooler. Thank you for an amazing hey, run. And Lainey gives $25. Tickle the Steve, I dare you. Oh my gosh. <laughs> the AI I I community shotgun. is the hottest community. Fire hey, hot hype. <laughs> a fun fact, the uh, shotgun will stun C briefly. Uh, you don't see it in this category, but the category Nico runs CC only. You do use the shotgun because you never pick up the flamethrower. Mm -hmm. um, it's a serious flex too, so uh, I know I know I'm giving I'm a plug too, in the on the stream, I, but like, I, I don't if, attempt that. I'm too scared to do something like that. <laughs> if you like what I do, you'll like what Nico does as well. He runs this game as well. He just does a different category. Um, you know. <laughs> and on a steering right. wheel. So a bit more lore, uh, Marlo's trying to blow up Sebastopol, and unfortunately, despite the fact we tried to stop the overload of the reactor on the ship, uh, it, it, didn't, it didn't work. So Taylor's trapped in there, um, you know, in a little bit. I, guys, I gotta ask, can we get a preemptive F in the chat for Taylor? Mm. Taylor, F Taylor's an chat. absolute, absolute Chad, and unfortunately, unfortunately it doesn't end well for Taylor. We gotta get the heck off there, though. It's flamey, it's smoky. Smokey the Xeno reminds you. The wise Smokey the Xeno reminds you only you can stop space station fires. So only use you your flames over wise. Explosions. Also, gravity gives up on a little bit here. Not too much of a big deal, but you know. Nice Bowman. Pretty Hot odd. take. Oh Taylor did nothing wrong. Oh, come <laughs> on. <laughs> Oh, goodness me. Oh, you guys are fantastic. Yeah, dude, Taylor, Taylor needs all the love she can get. She's trying so her there, best. So there is a fun little thing that um, myself and Noel's actually found at one point. Um, you, with crouch clipping, you can actually crouch clip through the fire of that very first uh, bit that you leave through. And because everything is like a scripted walkthrough, you can actually... Uh, not progress as soon as you sit down and you're just looking into the, the blackness and it's, it's just a like, this cool. is fine moment. <laughs> All yeah. right, so that concludes mission 15, which means we're on to mission 16. I gotta, I gotta warn you guys, mission 16 is my worst mission. I'm gonna do my best. I'm gonna start with a regular strat that I would do if I were going for a world record. If that fails, I've got a backup safety strat, but man, mission 15 is tricky. It's I'm gonna be extra cool if I get ones. this and I'm wearing the cool, the cool kid glasses. I might put on the other pair, okay. so, just in case we get this. Just to give a little bit of a visual, why this is so dangerous is that there's a lot of humans. So the best way to compare it is like novice, it's basically that they're shooting nerf guns at you, and nightmare is like mega, I, I don't yeah, even know, it, like mega damage awesome. weapons. It's oh, Pepe man. Omega. Yeah. All right, so we got Molotovs. This strategy is a little fire as well. Um, but you know, we got six humans, two which have revolvers, so we don't want any of them. Oh my gosh, I got the good formation. Nice. All right, there's still one more formation I gotta worry about. Oh. Oh, that's bad, that's bad, that's bad. And we're good. Never mind, we're good. 
If he shot us oh. all that fast, we'd be in a rough spot. Uh, there's another guy here. He only got a shotgun though, so we don't have to worry about him. And we did what? That that was honestly, I could not have asked for a better basement <laughs> of mission 16. Man, I was expecting I was gonna reset three or four times just because it's marathon. Mm. The pressure. In practice, it was so, definitely a good few resets. It so was. This... I think I tried five times in practice. Yeah. There's always a charge pack on that, so I'm gonna get that. Can we get some marathon luck in the chat? Marathon luck. I guess so, man. All right, so I got this charge pack, which is gonna allow me to make a noise maker. We are gonna use one of these, and it is for the intended purpose. So that's a pretty cool feature. Um, but yeah, so I was able to take out both of our guys, which is nice, because we have to go through them once, and then we have to come up on the way back. Except that the a the aliens are active on the way back, so um, not only do we have to avoid getting shot by the revolver, which is almost always a one shot, uh, but we also want to avoid, well, you know, attracting Steve too much. Mm. Steve, Steve becomes pretty feisty. So, um, if you guys tuned in later, uh, it is worth noting that the alien, the xenomorph, learns as you go throughout the game, and. Mm. Uh, as the Xenomorph learns, and it kind of learns by unlocking nodes on a tree is the technical side of things, uh, but if you don't unlock the nodes on the tree via means of, of just doing it with the alien, they are scripted to unlock as you progress through the game. So by you get to the time you get mission 16, mission 17 especially, they are super, super feisty. And it can be a little bit saucy. So what we're doing now is we're going to be heading over to the Sfasibor Observatory. And the reason that we're doing this is that we're trying to find the correct values in order to um, turn around uh, some dishes that we're going to go to outside when we're spacewalking over towards um, some, uh, some power turn-ons because we're going to try to re-establish um, communication with uh, Verlaine, who's going to try and help us actually get out of Sebastopol as well. So we're about to hit one of the most boring parts yeah. of the entire yeah. game. Objectively, it's the like the most boring. I don't love the best, Mission most 16. fun, most non-boring right, missions. It's, it's beautiful. Oh, I got a. Oh, I was reading. I got to pray it on soft lock. I mean, oh, it's spectacular, it but for a speedrunner, it's just kind of like slowly moving. <laughs> the slow-mo part of it. I just had a realization mm. the possibility that you can soft lock at these and just out of random. So mm -hmm. I'm, I'm a little kind of nervous now. Okay, we're good. <laughs> One more. Um, these are also objectively the worst mini games. Uh, yeah, these if you, if you get it just a tiny bit too early, you lose 10 or more seconds. Mm. With some of the puzzles, if you accidentally press, key, like a, a, you back out of the puzzles, depending on which puzzle it is, you can actually soft lock it to a point where you can't activate it anymore. That is, in that is basically a run reset or a mission reset. It's not a good time. Yeah, not usually. <laughs> Gotta wait till the circle's all the way in there. All right, something like that. Cool. We didn't soft lock. It's it's good to go. I figured I get that. <laughs> Mission 16, I, I'm blown away, went so well to start. We got the perfect formation. Um, so I was like, we, we're bound to soft lock or something. It's it's just, yeah. So I'm very glad it did not happen. Um, yeah, we got the long space wall coming, which is the reason I don't love this mission. Uh, Cause it's just like 11 minutes of kind of similar to mission nine. It looks really cool when you're casually playing, but there's not much to look at when you've looked at it all. I mean, when we go outside, let's, let's try not to make too light of the situation. Oh no. <laughs> oh no, no, no! Boo! <laughs> Does Boo fit here because it's a spooky game? <laughs> oh, that's, that's good. That's Sorry. Franchise, good joke. That was really, that was something. Should we get a few donations in then? Oh, absolutely, yeah. We got t plenty of time for donations here in this spacewalk. Yeah, you got it. Uh, Gollum gives $5. He says, Steve's just upset that you guys are isolating him. If you got to know him, you'd see that he's pretty cool and not as hot-headed as you make him out to be. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. Llama gives $50 and says, let's see that hair. Llama knows what's up. We are approaching the $6,000 mark. We're just a little over that still. So keep that coming in. Mud Skunk gives $25, says loving the enthusiasm. Heck yeah, dude. We've got $20 from Emerson. They say it's 2.30 a.m. and this guy's such a riot, I literally can't turn the stream off. Release the hair, sir. 
Give <laughs> the stand. people what they want. <laughs> oh, it's perfect. It's almost like the the uh, the closed browser button is too hot to handle. Oh, close gosh. Browser button. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Bro, you want to touch? You want to want to want to mess with that button? Oh man, a quick update on the lore. So if you guys were here since mission two, um, Nico described that our goal, our first goal is gonna be to try to contact communications. We you know, we got stranded for our, 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 our crew, so we wanna try to get in contact for Lane on the Torrens of the ship we came on and talk to her. We've gone on a detour this entire game. And we're finally in the process of manually lining the massive dish up here so that we can talk to Relaine. It's, it's been quite the journey just to finally get around to that. But, you know, it wouldn't be a horror game if you had to do everything for yourself. So I guess it's fun. Uh, but anyway, that's the update on the war. Kyle, keep the, uh, keep the donations rolling, my friend. I do like that little incentive there, actually. If it, this is a deathless run, will you still put the, let the hair down? He, he died in three, though. I'll say deathless everywhere after. After, uh, mission three and, and yeah, uh, uh, yeah. six. So <laughs> that know. just means the sooner we hit 250k, the more hair down time you the get. The more hair, exactly. exactly. Here's a follow-up to that donation that sent chills down my spine. Chirpy <laughs> gives $25. Says, I've been friends with Quasal and his wife since high school. Glad to know they're watching this run just like I am. Love them both heaps and wishing them the best. Also, $25 to see that glorious golden hair flow free. <laughs> I didn't realize how I high love, B your hair would be, I dude, but I actually it, love it, like, so I much. <laughs> We've got I... K gives $25 and says, video games. We're gamers here, dude. <laughs> oh, we've got, ooh, this is a good one. Kyle Degradable gives $25 and says, I have seen zero evidence of Steve being bad. Have you tried talking to him? <laughs> we did, but it got a little heated. You got, you got a little, there we go, Nils is the perfect, I was like, I'm, wheels were spinning, I'm like, oh, there's gotta be some good reply to that. <laughs> it was an explosive argument, we just don't wanna have to confront it again. Hey, if the alien's being mean, you have to report him to HR. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Sevastopol HR, oh man. No wonder he's so mean, they, let, they abandoned the station a while ago. Guys, we figured it out. We cracked Sega's code. It's it's all revealed. <laughs> GDQ says all, tells all. <laughs> oh, we've got oh, a haiku yeah. in from Shadow Hero 92, Perfect. giving five dollars. Says a haiku for this run. This run is lit. Hold on, wait a minute. I'm counting these. <laughs> nope, these are wrong. Hold on, I'm taking back this donation while I count oh, <laughs> while yeah. I count these syllables. Refund. Oh my gosh. I'll count those and I'll come Just, back. You have to, if there's not enough syllables, you have to interpretively add syllables. I think that's the golden rule. Okay. Give me a second. I'll interpret where I need to count them. <laughs> Perfect. Uh, anonymous gives $25, says, love watching you run uh, Alien Isolation having worked on it. It's always a, It always amazes me to watch people speed run it. Oh, that's so awesome. A dev, anonymous dev, tell us who you are. Dev anonymous. Metalizer gives $5 and says, best entertaining speedrun I have seen. Thanks, Dre. Oh, thank you so much. Jaren Summers gives $50. Hello from Ooh. Amsterdam. I'm loving the run. Amsterdam. It's hey. fun being able to watch the late night stuff without having to stay up all night. Good luck to Dreyx. Yeah. I spent about six hours in the Amsterdam airport. If that makes me cool, I don't know if it does, but... <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate that the bathrooms were still in English. <laughs> okay, so the, I've counted the haiku syllables and I'm gonna stretch one out to make it five. Perfect, so here we perfect. go, Shadow Hero 92 with an with a edit from the host, gives $5, <laughs> says, a haiku for this run. This run is lit as fast as sliding on ice. That is my hot take. Oh my gosh! I like it. I Ice like it. And that you guys, you guys know the joke. There we go. Oh, we've got a limerick that just came in, and this is a Ooh. limerick for Steve from Klaus. He gives twenty-five dollars and says a limerick for Steve. He's a scary creature from space. 
He has too many teeth in his face. Steve is coming. You better start running. Please get us out of this place. <laughs> That's awesome. I love it. Give me yeah, more poetry. Fantastic. Oh my gosh, dude. And we are past the $6,000 mark. We're at like 5,700 nice. to unleash the hair. Keep unleash it coming in, my friends. Beautiful. We got about half an hour left in the run. Oh, the dream, make sure to mention the Zeno. Yeah, we will. Don't worry. He's coming up. <laughs> we still going on? So yeah, glad I get a chance to do this. Yeah, yeah, you got keep it. going. We're gonna mention Zenos to do like one more, and then uh, we'll have uh an anonymous gives a hundred dollars and says, "Let's nuke this place from orbit." Hey, there we go. And we got one more. <laughs> Barwell gives twenty-five dollars. Says, "We want the hair. We want the hair. <laughs> we want the hair." Fantastic. All right, so another fun little Easter egg. We got his uh, breaking quarantine a little bit. I know he's a Nazi, Nazi boy. Uh, but he's going to crawl up around here. Um, I think I'm to get to this pole. Oh, there he is right there. I missed him. And he's just going to go up and around. Uh, I'll make my lines imperfect just so we can watch him because this is this is too it's too great to pass up. Look at this. Look at this smug boy. So this is Steve V2. Steve N, I guess. <laughs> And, uh, yeah, he's he's in there, so you know. Hair for so oh, there's an idea. I like that, Stevie. All right, now we got time for a couple more as we get the heck out of our space suit. All right, you got it. Alyssa gives fifty dollars. Says, "Let's go." I love the game Alien Isolation. Trunk Monkeys gives twenty five dollars. Says, "You guys have me smiling all morning. Loving the vibes. Keep up the great run." Thank you so much, everybody. You have all been yeah. so generous during this run. This is great. Fantastic. All right, I'm driving a quick safety save here. Uh, Cause if I die, I have to do all of the spacewalk again. And we don't we want to avoid that at all costs. So oh, that's happened to me once before. It is not fun. Yeah. I, usually if it happens, I, I, I'm like, all right, nope. I don't care. This isn't a reset run. I'm done. <laughs> so after uh, Dre goes up this elevator, yeah. he's going to hit the glass with a fiery passion. And he's going to oh try God. to bait Steve to come in and kill the humans, those cold hearted humans. Yep. <laughs> and uh, then he's going to exit real quick. He's going to be a speedy boy, you know? Yeah, and, uh, so this yeah. is the same trick we use in Mission 14. Steve can't get to me, and this door is scripted to be locked, so he can't open the door himself. Only the human can open the door. So we're going to make him notice me once he wants me. Oh, he's going the other way. Well, that's not usually supposed to happen. Oh, uh, I... Go away, big guy. There he goes. That has happened before, but not, not usually. <laughs> So, you guys didn't see my cool flex. Basically, what happens if it works like it's supposed to, you literally walk over his tail because he's decided he's going to vent, and it's, uh, it's, it's a good feeling. It's stressful, but you know. All right, so now they are active. Um, we got to go back through those humans. We, we took out the, both the revolver guys, so this should be reasonably safe. I'm going to have the shotgun in hand just in case. I'm going to psych run. He runs behind that door behind me. I'm sorry, Twitchy, I don't get to show off your new strat. I had too good of a basement. I don't know if Twitchy, you're seeing this right now, but if you watch it, I'm sorry, my friend. You made a strat just for me. There's my human friend right there. Espet is Italian for weight. There's more Italian lessons for you guys. All right, we're going to make a bit of noise. I want Steve to be over here. Learning Italian with chat. Mm. Yeah, dude, I, 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 like I said, I've learned more than I'd like to admit from this game. All right, I'm going to find throw out because we got past humans. Again, we didn't have any uh, revolver boys, so we were good to go. Don't drop, Steve. He likes to drop right here. There he goes, right on time. Had he dropped any earlier, I would have had a flame him first. And that concludes mission 16. I'm genuinely proud because that's like that the best mission, mission 16, 16 I've had in a while. I got to take the glasses off. Mission 17 is dark, and I got to focus a lot. We're gonna hit that door. There's a human in here. I'm gonna whip out a flare. Uh, the first thing we're gonna try to do is door break, and it's kind of a multi-stage glitch. Um, that door is the door we need to open is currently locked, and it'll be open as soon as power turns on. If the human is outside of the door when we're turning the door on, oh, he will 
uh, open the door for us. There's supposed to be a face hugger that spawns when we open the door, but if he opens the door for us, we don't have the face hugger. Because we don't have the face hugger to flame, Steve never drops in and makes this first part a lot safer. Kiko is 1851 as always. Um, I've got to hope he's going the right way. Nice, right to the flare. 1851. Oh, he saw me. He might forget I'm here. There's, ah, oh, we might have missed our break though. That's all right, it's not the end of the world that we missed. I can't show you guys a range of the ton, though. This human must think he's a hot shot or something. <laughs> yeah, dude. <clears throat> oh, he wasn't walking back <laughs> to it. So no, I can use baton and charge from there. I gotta take up my flamethrower. So we will have the riskier strat, but you know, that's all right. All right, now we gotta run. Come on, come on, come on. Give me a good drop. Perfect. Can Steve run Linux? I wish. So now Steve is distracted, distracted by the same flare. So we do double use this flare, which is really nice. I'm gonna take up my EMP mine as well. I'm gonna watch him. Uh, so you can see his tail and his head just through the window over there. He's gonna walk up in a bit. There he goes. As soon as he does, he's done with that flare. That's the secondary actual intended use of the EMP mine is you can make a loud noise as a distraction. So now this cutie is gonna be like, oh, what's that? Oh, whoa, what's this? And uh, <laughs> run on over to it. Perfect. He's gotta take the dog out for a walk, you know? Play, play the dog, fast. Exactly, yeah. And he'll be over there long enough we can just hide right here by this tram. Despite the Skip. fact we missed door break, again, it's half RNG, uh, which direction the human walks. Uh, despite the fact we missed door break, oh, I'm out of flares though. We gotta have a bit riskier of a next section. Ooh, um, so we're gonna spicy. lose the same thing in mission 14 and mission 16 as well. Steve is down. Now, despite the fact that it looks like this tram is moving, it's actually perfectly still and we don't cut to loading stream. So Steve is still right there relative to us, meaning he can hear us. So we want to try to get him to vent so he's not on this side when we get to it. So we're gonna be really mean to this poor box. It's all right though, it's for good cause, Mr. Box. And as soon as that door opens, I'm gonna start psycho running. Be silent. He shouldn't drop, but if he does, he'll vent right away. And we're good. All right, now so, I'm gonna get my uh, noise maker repaired. Oh wait, I gotta drop a safety save, don't I? Yeah. Uh, can I explain the tram part real quick? Oh, go for it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So Trey, or Trey. Oh my gosh, I'm thinking of the RE2 runner. Um. <laughs> oh my gosh, Dre um, was hitting the tram because he wants al uh, the alien to vent uh, because he doesn't want him when he goes up the elevator. That's all he was doing yep, it for. Yep. The, the stream the stream delay between uh, commentary and being able to see the run is a bit unfortunate, but okay, we're gonna shock the noise maker there. Um, it's a bummer to have another flare, but we'll survive. It's not too bad. Steve just likes to behave. There's this guy that needs a tickle around the corner. He's he's a bit of a hothead as well, so you know, gotta be careful for him. And we're gonna do another <laughs> cool trick called key card clip. Um, we're supposed to have to get a, a key code to open the store. The key code is 1984 if you're curious. And I got it right away, nice. Uh, but by uh, hugging that wall a little bit and toggling our crouch, we're able to look up and down uh, while the space station tilts, right? Because we're, we're out down in orbital, st orbital stabilizer. Um, so the space station's tilting and you can see that. It's kind of a cool effect. I wonder if chat uh, would know the reason why it is 1984 as the code. I don't actually know why that is. Well, I won't spoil it for you now, but I'll do it in about five minutes, yeah? All right, sounds like a plan. Um, just want to cut in real quick and say we are just about 5,000 away from hair percent. So, so awesome. make sure you get that train rolling. Let's get it before the game is over. Yeah, run's finishing up decently so. soon. So mission 17 is notorious for this hallway as well. We have to run through it four times, and Steve does something different each time we run through it. This time he's over by that noise maker, so it should be pretty safe. Gonna do oh, a, we're going to do a smooth left turn. I took a couple steps. We're all right. If we're, oh, wait, no, it's already too late for the flare. Um, we're going to drop to flare in that hallway as well uh, to prepare for the next stage. Unfortunately, we couldn't, so I'm going to have to use a bit more flamethrower fuel. Let's check how much I have, actually. Someone in chat just got it. This is a suicide. It was uh, the, a reference to George Orwell's book of 1984. Oh, really? That was a face hugger there, by the way. Okay, I didn't hear him die, so I had to be sure. There is a, a, a hardcore flex strat where you actually go grab that terminal and then flame him, but you have to get the timing and the RNG where that face hugger is perfect. Now, you can see he's going to be around the corner here instead, which is a bummer, because it doesn't look nearly as cool. I'm just going to go a little slowly. He's going that way. There he goes, now he turns around. Steve? Steve? My BB, come on. Ooh. Go. 
Monka W. That was a that was a Steve Papegan right there, dude. He didn't know where to be scared. <laughs> oh, I'm jumping no. at the safety save here. Mission 17 is full of surprises, and so gotta play it as safe as possible. Run to the hallway twice now, which is nice. Uh, now we're gonna take another advantage of another scripted moment here. He's gonna jump through this window. We're just gonna get nice and close, clip through him, and flame him a couple times. He's gonna just not even care. And again, the reason he does that is because he takes enough damage before he's actually enabled to look around and pay attention to my position. All right, now there's a chance he's in this vent here this time, so we gotta hug that wall. Just let you know, don't we did break that $5,000 mark. You guys are doing awesome. Keep it up. We've raised over $1,000 in just a little bit, so keep it going, guys. Dude, that's so odd. You guys are fantastic. All right, so he doesn't always drop there. He d not supposed to. But he's more likely to drop if running in a faster PC, and I guess I'm flexing now, I guess, but... Oh, man, it makes it run more dangerous. All right, now I'm gonna make a lot of... Are you kidding me, Steve? Uh-oh, not a, not a oh. good uh, thing to hear. That's not a good exit. Oh, my gosh. I just mm. saw it on the stream. That's not that. a good exit oh. at all. He's not supposed to do that. In fact, I don't think this has happened to me before. This is six? Uh, yeah, actually, this is the Oh my before. gosh. All right, now I gotta pray. This is the one moment of the run I use the motion tracker. I gotta stare into this, because if he Whoa. drops, he will be too close. No, don't beep to the left. Don't do it. Not Whoa. to the left. Not the left. No. We're good. If he drops, oh. he's close enough. You have a 50-50 chance of survival. Doesn't matter about the flamethrower. It was actually calculated. He knew he wasn't gonna die this one to make yeah. it a little bit more <laughs> that spicy. A, that was a Pog Champ mission 17. I'm that sorry. Was a troll I am very obviously. proud of that. Uh, I'm a little low on flamethrower fuel now, which is a bit rough, but. Again, it's still deathless right now, apart from mission three. Uh, so you never know, guys. You never yeah, know. Yeah, we're still checking mission 17 as well. But still, uh, what guys, we gotta do is if open you want to see Keep on donating, guys. Apologies, I interrupted you, Nico. Uh, so all we gotta do is open an elevator door. So Kyle, feel free to drop some more, uh, some more donations. We've got plenty coming in. Thanatos15 gives a hundred dollars. Says I keep hearing my name from my brother's room and figured out you all are, <laughs> and figured out all of you are calling me an alien. I swear I'm a human just like you. I'm a hu <laughs> I have human teeth just like all of us humans do, right? Oh, well, that's what the androids say too. <laughs> And they say non scopy as well, so maybe that's the Tyrion test. <laughs> uh, <laughs> we've got more poetry from Orankers. Gives ten dollars. Says more poetry on a space station. Those bots need a good tickle. Run from feisty hey, Steve. All right, so I only know I use two Molotovs. Oh, I don't get to do the fancy droid Molotov. That's all right. There's another android that likes to grab us, and I don't get to use my Molotov there, which is a bummer. We're on mission 18 now, guys. Kind of the home stretch, but we got two two parts to mission 18. First, I've got to activate this prompt, and on the other side there is um. Nice, we got a really good formation too, actually. You mind if I talk about the law here, buddy? Oh yeah, give me just a sec. So we're gonna do a little prompt skip. You're supposed to have to reactivate this, but if you hug the wall, you can actually activate this before um, the game is like. Actually, no, you should go under and do the long way that takes like a minute and a half. Um, and then I gotta dodge around this droid too, so I'm gonna try to be cool, but we'll see. All right, so law-wise right now, um, basically the, the Torrance is docked to oh. the Sebastopol. We're, we're like, we're all trying to like collectively leave together. So we are trying to activate the emergency override for the docking clamp so that we can uh, we can go with uh, Verlaine uh, in the Torrens and uh, make our merry way. Heck yeah. Yeah, so this is what Verlaine told us to do. Um, although, as you can tell, it's pretty hot in this room. You know, it's almost as hot as how fast we're going. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm really stretching for these now. I'm yeah. so sorry. It's like we have exhausted a lot of them, but you know, it's it's still it's still a good was, uh, uh, hot was time. That meant we to got be, uh, two scripted drops here. There's fine for a fuel. So I'm gonna run around. I gotta watch the tail so I don't get blocked. It's on that side this time. Cool, he ran the other way. And we got one more. I'm gonna get the Molotov ready. Hold it at this door as soon as it opens, throw it in the ground. We're gonna show him what's up. There we go. Yo, ye. Ye. Ye, 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 baby. Oh man, we got a. Uh, as soon as you touch this lever, fun fact, the aliens despawn. So if you got one on your tail, if you get to the lever, you're good to go. You have a fire on your butts. Yes, Mew. Thank you. We needed that. 
And Ripley gets a little emotional here. Unfortunately, it's not the best for speed running. We got one more section now. Um, and we got a we got a cutscene, uh, a bit of like a loading screen here. So Kyle, feel free to get probably three or four more donations in. Cool. We've got one from the not so anonymous dev Vicky, with a hundred dollars. Says, "Hey Vicky here, cinematic animator at Creative Assembly. Great Ooh. job on your run on one of my favorite games. Keep saving those frames and give Steve a big hug for me." Heck yeah, that's so awesome, dude. That's so cool. Uh, right. Arasom gives $25, says, glad to see GDQ back on, even if we can't do it the normal way this time. Looking forward to great sure. runs this week. Good luck, Drex. Heck yeah. All right, we got another really cool glitch coming up. It's called Hugger Boost. What we're going to do is take advantage of the huggers. They always like to jump on our face. If we're crouching and holding our weapon up, it adds our two speeds together. You see a bug similar to this with Subnautica, if you're curious. Um... But yeah, it adds the two speeds together, and it gives us a nice launch forward. It's a little risky. I didn't need to grab that flare. I saw it. I got excited. Oh, we're out of fuel, too. Ooh, this is going to be a little risky. All right, we got two huggers here. I got to take both these guys out. No. Mm. The first one sometimes blocks the flame of the second one. Unfortunately, that's what happened this time around. That's a bummer. I got a little ahead of myself. That was not a good sound to hear, but that you know what? Tragic. You're still doing great, dude. This is honestly like go. a really, really good run for GDQ. I'm, I'm super happy with this run. All right, we got one more. I got to pay attention to this timing here. Come on. There it is. I got about a little less than half, about somewhere between a quarter second and a half a second to decide. All right, cool, revolver's loaded. I'm gonna hold the revolver out. We got another cutscene where two Xenos are supposed to drop. Uh, one does during the cutscene, one does directly after. If we fire a gun, as soon as the cutscene ends, he doesn't drop, which is good, because he's uh, he's not scripted like this guy. Uh, so because that, we're able to run right past him. The other one, if you get too close, he, uh, he gives you a little hug with his mouth. And we got another <laughs> elevator here. Uh, this mission's full of jump scares. <laughs> So since you died there, does that mean that hair percent is the only way to see that hair now? Uh, maybe. I don't know. I... You guys are so fantastic. I should, at least show it. I should at least show it a little bit. We're just over 4K, so let's make that happen, oh, and man. then there's no it's questions about whether that hair gets released. Yeah, dude. Oh, my gosh. Keep it going, everyone. The best part Unleash of Mission 18 is that we have a bunch of auto saves as well in case we choke, which is nice. Uh, we got a tram here. Uh, but Cal, feel free to drop another donation. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, we've got the newbie with $50 says this runner's personality is infectious. We could run, but the good vibes would catch us. He's making late <laughs> nights so fun with this alien run. <laughs> Times like so this great. are so precious. Heck yeah. Oh, so I, I did, did not know that was a limerick until I was halfway through it. <laughs> oh, <wow. laughs> all right, nice. all right. So what I did there, I hugged that wall and you can actually skip the second tram as well. Um, it's, it's a little little feature. If you haven't played the game before um, and you don't vividly remember this mission, it wouldn't be very noticeable, but, um, oh man, I do not like how low my fuel is. In fact, I gotta do a quick check. Uh, we're at 14 fuel. Okay, so, um, yikes. I gotta do as quick of a grab as possible. Actually, no, I gotta use the shotgun. I gotta do uh, CC only strats. Oh, I missed. CC only, you only get one shotgun shell for those, so, you know, I have it easy. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I'm out of fuel, so <laughs> I was able to get one of them and I'm not the second. Any percent strats? Yeah. Any percent strats. strats. Yeah, Nico knows all about that, that oh, shotgun. Oh, don't I just. Oh, mm. man. <laughs> Another fall. Poor Ripley. We get scripted I health here, though, so you can't die in this fall, which is nice. So within nice an 80% shoot. run, you only get four shotgun shells to kill six face huggers. So the very last shot there, you can have to kill them both within one final shot. It is so tough. It, it really is, yeah. Oh man, we're pretty much on the home stretch now, guys. Uh, we got to do a spacewalk. Uh, oh. I'm gonna leave it to Kyle to get a couple more donations in, uh, you... and then I'll explain the next glitch coming up. Ladder fall. You got it. Here's an excellent one from X56 with $500. Wow. Money for the hair. Donation Money to runner's choice. Hair. Is this a haiku? <laughs> nice. CC Arathom to reply to your message is a glitch check uh, where you bind your crouch action to your scroll wheel, which allows you to rub up against doors and just glitch through them. You can skip from mission two to mission 18 that way. And so I like the category. I get the full alien experience. 
Oh man, all right, we can get uh, probably two more in, two or three maybe. All right, we've got $50 from Kenzie GNC, the most enthusiastic runner I've seen yet. Go, Drix! I appreciate it, dude, that's awesome. And then Lane gives $5, says, I was supposed to go to bed ages ago, but I can't leave Steve. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, dude. My mouse is falling apart, speaking of which. Uh, do we keep going, guy? Well, we got, Spe we got speaking time. of Steve, Steve donates $10 and says, ma'am, ma'am, you dropped your ID. I've been trying to get your attention. <laughs> See, it's just new, a misunderstanding. New lore has been leaked. <laughs> All right, we're at forty-one hundred dollars to get that hair. Keep oh, them man, rolling in, close. like Drew, who gives twenty-five dollars. Says Steve, look good, feel good, play good. That's so. That's, oh my gosh. <laughs> Guys, we got got to get these gamer glasses on. So I'm gonna explain. We have two more glitches in this run. One of which is completely RNG. Uh, that's the second, and one of them is uh, dependent on my ability to do something. Now, being the very last glitch in the run, uh, it's so so easy to choke. It's not actually uh -huh. too hard, but uh -huh. it's so easy to choke. Uh -huh. uh, it's called double pins, and Nico's trying to rub it in now. Uh, <laughs> Single I, I pins. Choke it so Single often. Pins. I choke so often that my role in the Alien Discord server is single pins for this exact reason. So hopefully I get it at least once. We got why don't you double double pins? Hopefully we get it at least once to show it off to you guys. That's why I put on the gamer glasses. We have to be prepared, as prepared as possible to make sure we get these double pins. It looked like a true gamer with those glasses. I can't I even deny it. Like it's again. actually a major gaming moment for you. <laughs> Like, oh my gosh, the, I, I don't even think that'll block the intensity of your bright future, dude. Like, it's just, it's crazy. Man. Kyle, we can do one more quick one. Sure, Steve is donating a lot right now. Steve gives $10 and says, little known fact about us aliens, the only way to truly defeat us is with donations to Doctors Without Borders. Hey, oh. I like the sound of that. Oh man, all right, we got the pins coming up. Dude, pressure's on, man. I shouldn't say that. Does it help me? Like, you know, I got this. Here we go. There's that. There's that. That mental attitude. All right, I'm gonna take a bit of extra time for the lineup. Nice. There it is. Once. So what I'm doing, I'm activating both of these props at the same time. Each time I get it saves 15 seconds. So you see both pins come up at once. And all right, one more time. Yes, dude. Let's go. Alright, oh, we got one more glitch and it's totally RNG. Um, it is known as fast walk. It's it's a bit of a complicated one. Basically what happens is that you would usually walk slow, but instead, if you get it, you walk fast. Uh, and it saves about eight seconds. Uh, but yeah, this is about the end of mission 18. Um, which means we got just about, I think, 41 seconds if we get it, is the mission nine segment, 19 segment. Um, you guys have put in the massive effort for hair percent, though. So I, I'll at least, I'll at least, uh, I'll be sure to show it off of their Elys. All right, and cutscene. This is basically Sebastopol falling into KG348. And now we hope, dude. Come on, fast swap. Let's get it. RNG, 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 come on! No! Skill! Oh, he oh, didn't was get it. Oh, guys, it's time to reset. I'm sorry, we're starting back in mission That's one. That's a rip from yeah. Tragic. Not... <laughs> Might as well just say it's a uh, lost as well, run. Might as well in the run here, dude. Oh, yep. man. Uh, anyway, you can die in this section as well. Again, it's a 40, I guess it's about a minute, which you don't get fast walk. It's a minute long mission, but you can die. Don't worry, though, I can give the tutorial. You hold backwards uh, for a little bit here. Uh, and then as soon as you look to the right, you hold left. Uh, we got time coming up really soon as well. Now you look right and you start scrolling. Time is as soon as the screen goes to black. Oh uh, man, it's gonna be about three, Heck no, two, one, time. That my G -G is a isolation. Oh my gosh. Sorry, it can't be too actually... loud, it's four. I we also hit the 250K. Away. Oh, yes. Yes. Congratulations and thank you so much to everybody. Legends. Oh, oh my gosh, GDQ. 
You got oh you my gosh, go. unleash you know, the beast, so Ray! Unleash the beast! Can you give you guys those hair flips? Yo, I, we hit the hair percent! You guys are legends! Holy dang! And yo, uh, we got 239 with loads! That was actually an insane run! I, I did not get a single practice run that was as fast as this! So I'm so glad I guess everything lined up just the way we need it. Oh my gosh, thank you guys so much. You guys are absolute legends. Um, I appreciate the support. You guys actually at the 250K, that is, that is insane. Oh my gosh, I, I absolutely know you guys are so, so awesome. I can't thank GDQ enough for having me, Kyle for hosting, as well as my friends Nico Hart and Knowles for joining me today. Um, they are also alien speedrunners and they also stream it every now and again So definitely if you enjoyed me definitely consider showing them some love as well. They definitely deserve it I couldn't have done it without them. Definitely not the hot cold jokes um, All thanks to our <laughs> friend Mr. Coleman um, If you guys are curious what I do, I know shameless self plug I like to stream a variety of things such as alien speedruns um, I've got a cool stream coming up in the next couple weeks. Hopefully I'm gonna attempt to complete alien on a, uh, a dance Oh, if it'll unfold Hug, on a hug, dance hug, dance hug, revolution hug. pad, I'll only be using my feet to complete the run, and uh, it should be a blast. So I'm really excited about that run coming up. Um, again, it, guys, that is so awesome. Get the 250k. Let me get up. The music's pretty loud here. Uh, the metal one has fewer buttons. That is a that is a good question. Metal one has six buttons. The soft one has ten. As well as it's easy to do a trick known as bracketing, where you can step on multiple buttons as once, which then you can rebind to a separate input altogether to have enough inputs for the game. Um, so yeah, and uh, if you like funny runs as well, uh, Knowles does uh, extra hype like. Speed percent, I can't think it was like 200 percent. 400 percent, baby. Yeah, like four times the speed of the base game. Yeah, Ni so. uh, Nico does steering wheel percent, so he uses a steering wheel, which is absolutely yep. legendary as well. Um, so so we fun. got all kinds so of fun things. Accelerators go forwards. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. So, uh, yeah. Just oh, yeah. to. Uh, just to give a shout out to the AI community, you can find us at speedrun.com forward slash AI. The category extensions that Dre was talking about is AI meme. We are a super cool community. I have almost never had issues with anybody in here. It is so lovely. These people are so supportive. We love helping new runners. And it's just really cool, you know. Obviously, make sure to check out Dre on Twitch. It's how you it's spelled on the screen, and check out Nico at twitch.tv slash n i k o h e a r t. You also can find me in the Discord community as well as the speedrun community. I'm at fourth in the category that Dre is second in. So, yeah. Hey, Eddie. Oh man, I have to say, Knowles is mentioned community. The alien would not be nearly this fun of a run. It's three hours long, right? I think this is like the second or third longest run that GDQ accepted today, which is. Or sorry for this this event, which is absolutely crazy, uh, but it would not be nearly as fun if it weren't for the community and showing you the way along. Again, somebody made me a strat like an hour before the run, just in case missing sixteen didn't go my way. Like um, absolute shout as a community for real. They are they are so so friendly. Um, I think yeah. If uh, Nico knows even any final final thoughts as well, um, I think that's it. <laughs> Thank you so much for yeah. having me on, um, Dre. I really do appreciate Dude, you. Thank and you so much for coming. You had to wake GDQ. up early for this. Everyone who donated today, everyone who took a part of this run, thank you guys so much, especially reaching that $250,000 towards Doctors Without Borders. You guys are amazing. Thank you so much. Yeah, that is that is no small number. And the fact we've only been doing GDQ now for two days, to hit 250K, we're well on pace for that, that million. You know, speed running all, we're all about that pace. So, oh my gosh, that is just... Just insanity. I saw like Mission 14 where it's still 244. I'm like, oh man, it's like, well, I want to show off the hair, but and then you guys, you guys did it. Oh my gosh. I apologize if we got too involved in the run. We missed a couple donations as well, but they are still very, very appreciated. I think Kyle will be covering that after this run too. But uh yeah, um you know, we finished early, so I guess uh you guys can do the next run a bit earlier as well. Uh but I think that's gonna do it for us. So thank you guys so so much for having us. Thank you so much, Dreyx. Let's get a bunch of hype, a bunch of love in the chat for that amazing run of Alien Isolation. And for hitting 250K at 5 in the morning where I am. What an amazing group you all are.
Coming in right at the last minute there was DK Salfo with a $4,000 donation. They do it with poetry saying, aliens scare me. Should this be made a haiku? Hair percent unlocked. Thank you, DK Salfo, and thank you for everyone staying up with us here at Summer Games Done Quick 2020 Online, powered by Twitch. I am the Kyle Thomas. We're going to send it over to a Twitch ad. Everybody be great. Treat each other with love and kindness, and I will see you all soon. Hello everyone, uh, my name is Ikdysis, and I'll be taking over the hosting block for the Silent Hill Homecoming run and these late night hours. Hope you're all doing great. Uh, before I begin though, I'd like to talk a bit about the Yeti. Uh, the Yeti creates amazing merch and apparel for video game culture, and has been an official supporter of Games Done Quick events since 2011. Over $1 million have been donated to GDQ charities. As well, all profits from the SGDQ 2020 collection go to Doctors Without Borders. Shop the Yeti's official SGDQ 2020 collection at www.theyeti.com. Hope you all enjoyed the Alien Isolation run. Uh, we saw some great donations from that one. Uh, for instance, we have $10 from Design Tech DK saying, great run, great energy, great hair. We have $25 from Jose96 saying, this is amazing. Thank you so much for doing it. We have $25 from Captain Balcon saying, Loving the energy, dude. Great run of a great game. All right, now we're ready to uh, send it on over to an interview with Spike Vegeta and Schmumbler. 
Hello, welcome everyone back to Summer Games Done Quick 2020. I am Spike Vegeta, and I have the pleasure of being joined by one of the greatest runners in the horror community. We got Schmumbler right here, current world record holder for a lot of categories in Silent Hill Homecoming. He'll be running that game for you guys. Coming up right here in a bit after this interview. Schmumbler, how are you doing this 4.30 in the morning? I'm doing all right. How's it going? <laughs> I'm doing great. Yeah, definitely excited for your run. I'm always, I've been a big fan of horror game speed runs for a long time. Definitely looking forward to, I've never seen a homecoming run until I did some research for this one. We'll, we'll get into that here in a second. Yeah. Um, but start off, I want to ask you in my free time, myself and a group of my uh, very nerdy speedrun friends have enjoyed predicting the GDQ games list and analyzing hundreds of different speed games every six months. For a long time, the Silent Hill community has been offering homecoming, and it's awesome to see the passion of the community and your hard work be paid off by its inclusion in marathons like SGDQ. Where would you say the community's passion for this particular speed games come from? Why this above so many others? So I think that's kind of a, a two-part answer. Um, I think a big part of it is just Homecoming has always been one of the two black sheep of the Silent Hill franchise. Mm -hmm. And, you know, at least for me, a big draw for Homecoming is taking that one of those few Silent Hill games that just everybody hates on and turning <laughs> it into something just incredible to witness and to play. I, I've said it many times for speed games over the years. Sonic 06, not a good video game, but can be an amazing speed run. Actually, we've oh, got yeah. awful block and that sort of stuff here at GDQs. Uh, just cause something isn't necessarily well received casually could still be an amazing speed run. So, and uh, watching through it, it definitely looks like that. I want to ask you as part of the Silent Hill speed running community and the great horror speed running community as a whole, give me your top three speed games from the genre. So that's actually a pretty tough question. Um, yeah, a lot of good ones. Yeah, and I haven't really touched a whole lot of them myself personally. And I'd mm -hmm. hate to mention Homecoming because that just kind of feels like cheating a little bit. But, <laughs> but it's pretty good. It's pretty yeah. good. Yeah. yeah. But I would say Amnesia is definitely up there. Uh, if anybody mm -hmm. saw that earlier, just the amount of out-of-bounds that you can do in that game is mind-boggling. Yeah. Um, second one, I'd have to go with Clock Tower 3. Just because oh. I do have that kind of soft spot for the more cheesy horror games. And for sure. when you have a, a speed run about a video game where half the time you're just optimizing movement as much as you can, and the other half you're turning into a magical girl anime, it's just really fun. <laughs> <laughs> Dang, now I want to see a run of Clock Tower 3 all of a sudden. I've never yeah. I've I'll mess with Resident Evil, I'll mess with Silent Hill later this year. Never Clock Tower. You might have just sold me on it, my friend. Yeah, third one I'd say would probably go to Silent Hill 3 just because it uh, tends to be a pretty easy one to pick up, but especially lately they've been finding some new out-of-bounds tricks that kind of cuts down a good amount of time, a couple minutes here and there. Um, it's Silent Hill games in general are just really easy to pick up. So it's a good beginner's game that has a pretty high skill ceiling. Let me actually jump forward a question then now that you're asked that you're talking about that. I've always believed that horror games are actually really good first speed games for people. I ran them myself back in the day with the original Resident Evil 1 and Resident Evil 2. As one of the community's strong direction would you point aspiring runners towards if they wanted to get into Silent Hill speedrunning? Yeah, so definitely two or three. Um, I would say with the new stuff, three is a little harder to get into now, but two has always been really easy to get into. And that's also one of the games where we have an RNG manipulation uh, Ooh, spreadsheet okay. that you can follow when you're playing the PC version. And that takes a lot of that randomness out of it, makes it a much easier game where you're just focusing on having really good movement. I, I love spreadsheets like that where there still is technically RNG, but it asks on the runner to be good and adaptable to whatever RNG the game gives you, but you know how to deal with it at all times. That's awesome. Yeah. And one more question. I want to talk just a little bit about the run today, not to spoil anything for the viewing audience at home, but I watched through your world record in this category and noticed some pretty awesome boss fights, 
precise movement and crazy looking clips actually which single part of the run are you most nervous for this sgdq showcase so if you asked me a week ago that would be the pillar climb but i've actually managed to find a way to make that pretty consistent now i'd say there's a spot after the first boss fight where well no actually i guess before the first boss fight where we're trying to get through a hotel and there's just a pretty good series about three minutes long of back-to-back skips that are all really hard at that point you don't have the shotgun which is our primary clipping method in the game Mm -hmm. and so having to make do with just a knife and a pistol it, it can get a little a little tough it's yeah watching it, 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 there, it there was a certain amount of jank to it watching those versions of oh, the yeah. clips where you could tell like you had to reapply it many times and then barely kind of turn it again don't want to spoil it too much but watch out guys this is not your standard horror game tonight we're going to be seeing some clips and other craziness by schmumbler again we'll be running all bosses new game plus schmumbler best of luck my friend hope the run goes well and uh we will see you guys for that on this very next run here at summer games done quick 2020 see you everybody All right, we are back from that great interview with Schmumbler and Spike Vegeta. Uh, let's take through some more donations, shall we? We have $25 from The M saying, First time donating to this year's SGDQ online, but it won't be the last. Keep it up. We have $50 from Bedford saying, Donation from Japan. Keep up the great work. Night Crew. We have $250 from FSSZilla255 saying, Glad this event has been going strong, even with all the potential setbacks. Quest 64 is an unsung gem for me that I'm glad to see getting a little more respect these days. Faults and all. Maybe it's because the mechanics are kind of like Undertale. Good luck on the run. <laughs> 